Hi. It looks like we have a full quorum. We have a quorum here, so we're going we're gonna to get started. I want to welcome everybody to the Town of Cohasta Conservation Commission uh, meeting. This is today's Thursday, June 30th, 2022. Uh, in attendance this evening is myself, Jay Pimpari, who will be chairing the uh, meeting tonight in the absence of our chair, Chris McFarlane. Uh, also present, and after I call your name, just say please, uh, please say present, William Ashton. William Ashton, present. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, present. Trisha Grady. Trisha Grady, present. <clears throat> Great. So uh, absent this evening is our chair, Chris McFarlane, Eric Eisenhower, Kathy Berrigan, and our associate, Chris McIntyre. We have a quorum of four of us. Uh, so if anybody if, uh, it leaves this evening, we will not have a quorum to continue. So hopefully everybody hangs in here. I'm in a hotel in Vermont and have a great signal so far. So hopefully that continues. Just for the record and for the audience, uh, we will need three votes since we only have a quorum of four people. We would need at least three votes in support of the any application in order for the application to move forward. Uh, we cannot have uh, two nays, uh, two uh, abstentions, uh, two non votes. We need there needs to be three, at least three votes a majority of the uh, four commissioners in order for the project to move forward. Just some quick little housekeeping. Uh, there are a couple of items that are on the agenda that have been continued to July 4, uh, excuse me, yes, July 14th. The first is NOI 22-11, Stormwater Permit 22-06. That's 46 Border Street, the retail development. That project uh, was continued from May 5th. It is now being continued until July 14th. The other item, agenda item that's being continued to July 14th is a stormwater permit 22-16. That's 46 Black Rock Road, the addition and garage. It was originally continued from June 16th. That hearing is now being continued until July 14th. So those two hearings will be uh, continued. The first uh, item of business is a stormwater permit uh, 55 for 55 South Main Street, a mixed use development. I'm gonna read into the record, the uh, public hearing. Hold on as I pull that up. <clears throat> okay. In accordance with Massachusetts general laws, chapter 131, section 40 of the Cohasa wetlands bylaw, in the Cohasset Stormwater Bylaw, the Cohasset Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 30th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. via remote participation on a Zoom flat platform for stormwater permit 22-19 to construct a mixed-use building with associated pavement, parking lot, walkways, and landscaping for Cassie Malatesta at 55 South Main Street. The public is invited to offer public input via email at uh, cpectal at uh, cohassetmass.org and attend in advance of the public hearing. And also, sorry, I would make mention that our conservation agent, Charlotte Pechtel, is in, uh, in attendance this evening as well. If anyone from the audience would like to submit a question when the hearing is uh, undergoing, or in the middle of a hearing, just please do that through the Q&A uh, at the bottom of the screen on the Zoom here. We will be uh, monitoring the Q&A during the uh, session this evening. <clears throat> Looks like, Charlotte, you have promoted Jeff and, and Cassie. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Cassie. Uh, hey, Jeff, do you want me to promote uh, Greg as well? Yes, please. Okay. Jeff, do you, uh, either yourself or Greg, want to want to share your screen to take us through this application? Sure. Um, Gr Greg's going to take the lead on this one. And uh, All right. Yeah. Hi, Greg. Good evening. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. So yeah, for the record, Gregory Morris, registered engineer, Morris Engineering. Um, Cassie Melatesta, the applicant, is on with us as well. This is a stormwater permit. It's a Category 3 stormwater permit for a project at 55 South Main Street. Um, 55 South Main Street is right in the heart of downtown. Um, as you know, the property today it used to be a gas station. The gas station was shut down several years ago. The tanks have been removed from the gas station and it's been operating essentially as a, an automobile service station uh, next to the Red Lion. The property is about half acre in size. It's 20,347 square feet. All Greg, of can, uh, sorry, can I just, sorry to interrupt you. Do you, yeah. uh, do you have the schematic? Do you wanna share your screen? 
I, I would love to share a screen. I was okay. just about to get to that. That would be great. All right, thank you. You can see the uh, image on the screen there. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Yep. So this is a, a depiction of the existing site conditions. Um, what you can see is on the right hand side here. This is South Main Street. Um, on the bottom of the page here, this would be James Lane or the access for parking way. Um, the building immediately to the south of us here, this would be the Red Lion. This here being the site, again, the site's about half an acre in size. It's 20,347 square feet. You can see the existing building. It's a relatively flat site. It ranges in topography from elevation nine along South Main Street to about elevation 12 at the back side of the site. Um, the proposal here would be to demo this existing building. Um, during that process, we would be implementing erosion controls that are depicted on this plan here. Um, we would have an erosion control barrier. That's what this dashed line is around the entire site, as well as a construction fence. We would have a construction gate and entrance at this location onto South Main Street. And then we've also specified that we would have um, silt socks installed in any catch basins within 100 feet of the site as well. Um, of importance on this site, while there are no wetlands on the property or, or even within 100 feet of it, the James Brook culvert um, is located right here, it traverses the northeast corner of this site. It's located in an easement. Um, it is a precast culvert at this location, approximately five foot by five feet uh, as a box culvert. The site has no slope on it that's greater than 15%. There's no exposed ledge on the site. There are no trees on the site to come down. Um, it is 100% impervious land surface right now. It would also be classified as a property that's a land use with higher potential for pollutant loads as it's an automobile. Uh, repair service station. What's depicted on the site plans sheet five of what we submitted is what's proposed to be built here. Um, the proposal is a new three-story building. On the first floor would be approximately 3,350 square feet of commercial space. And then on the second and third floors would be a total of 12 um, apartment units. This line right here depicts the envelope of the building here, so it's like that. The commercial space would all be along the front of the building over through here along South Main Street. This portion of the building here would only be the second floor and third floor. On the first floor, the ground level, this is open surface area parking behind the building. So we're essentially cantilevering the second story of the building over the parking lot which would be located again behind the commercial space uh, behind the building. For drainage on this site, what we've done is we've taken um, drainage associated with the parking lot. We've proposed a porous pavement parking lot. Um, also located within that parking lot as an overflow, we have a catch basin. You can see that catch basin right here. That catch basin would then run in a northerly direction via pipe to a new drain manhole here. And then it would run to South Main Street to a new drain manhole at this location. This new drain manhole here would be over an existing pipe, which directly discharges into the James Brook culvert. Um, with this proposal, we are not proposing to physically touch the James Brook culvert in any way, shape or form. We are tying into the existing street drainage, though, in South Main Street, which ultimately discharges into that culvert system. The roof that we've proposed has an internal um, gutter system, essentially. It's all collected internally within the building. Um, we would have a separate discharge pipe out the front of the building here to that same drain manhole with all of the roof runoff going out to the South Main Street drainage system and ultimately the James Brook culvert. Grading on the site, as you can see, is again, it's a relatively flat site, beginning construction and post-construction. Um, elevation nine is about the low point right here behind the building where the catch basin is proposed. And then we match the grades along James Lane, 
and along South Main Street, which vary in elevation between uh, nine and 11 for the most part. This is connected to town sewer. There is no septic system here. Um, there's no alteration of wetland resource areas. It's uh, limited uh, amount of fill that would be required for the site. It's a net decrease in material. Uh, material would be removed for construction of the foundation. So it's not a net import to the site. How you see this here, the existing site again is 100% impervious land area. With this proposal, um, we're proposing 10,419 square feet of impervious, which represents just over half of the site. Um, we accomplished that by the use of the porous asphalt pavement. Um, we're actually proposing landscaping on the site, again, where none exists today. Um, we had provided a landscape plan, and I'm going to flip to that now. The landscape plan here um, along South Main Street on the right hand side, you can see trees that we're proposing along the pedestrian sidewalk on South Main Street out back behind the building to kind of screen the parking area back here. We are proposing um, plantings and again, trees here. Um, this is to buffer the park. What type of trees are those that you're proposing? Yep, so those are eight pear trees. I have a uh, planting list here. This was prepared by Hawk Landscape Design. Um, he had pulled a couple of the plants off of here from your suggested plant list on the website. Um, it's eight pear trees you'll see that there are 139 shrubs proposed on the site, as well as a couple of different ground covers to fill in the uh, gaps otherwise. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I wanna turn it over to you for questions and comments. I do expect tonight that we would be requesting a continuance of this project. We have not been before the planning board yet. We are scheduled to go in front of them on July 13th. Um, the planning board has also retained a peer review consultant to do a review of the zoning associated with this, as well as a review of the drainage associated with this. Um, we have not gotten the peer review comments back yet. Um, so I would, I would suggest ultimately that we continue this probably till your first meeting in August as a continuation, but I'd like to gather any questions or comments you have now so that we can address them uh, as we move yes, forward. Thank you. And, and you, uh, that was one of the questions I had, <clears throat> what other boards uh, need to review this project as well. If, if, as you have mentioned, planning will most likely be undergoing their formal review with a stormwater review. So I will let the planning uh, board <clears throat> uh, and entertain the, uh, stormwater review and drainage uh, calculations, et cetera, so that we will get a copy of that and have that for our next meeting, whenever that may be. The other one quick question I had here, and uh, as far as the parking goes, uh, not where the one, two, three, four, five cars are, but on the other side there, how do the cars get in and out of there? And what's, what's the route uh, of access? Is it through the James Lane? What, what, how do people get in and out of there? So our, our access is right here off of James Lane. This is a, you know, a two-way access point into this yeah. site. Um, these here are your traditional single spaces, easy in and easy out. This over here, these are the tandem parking spaces. These would be assigned to the units themselves um, so that you're not blocking anyone, anyone in. You would have- you're blocking, You'd be blocking yourself. You're blocking yourself. You have control of both parking spaces in a tandem situation. Okay. Uh, I have some more questions, but before I do, I want to turn it over to Charlotte. Uh, do you have any uh, questions or concerns or anything you want to bring up for the commissioners before we open it up to the commission for further questions? Yeah, so I um, sent my list of questions, mostly just asking for clarification on some of the 10 stormwater standards. So I imagine the peer reviewer um, is going to look at those as well. Mm -hmm. I was interested in uh, a little bit more clarification on standards four, six, and seven. Um, the four would be the, you know, the um, total suspended solids. I think standard six is the higher pollutant and standard seven was redevelopment. 
Um, so just uh, waiting on some questions for that. And so I think, you know, with the continuance, they would probably address all the questions at once, if I'm not um, mistaken. Um, and I did have some, uh, you know, just general comments about erosion control, you know, being clear with construction entrances, uh, labeling stockpile areas, what materials are going to go where, you know, just keeping in mind with the wellhead protection area. Um, so those are some of my general comments. Um, and I know we all know what the site looks like, but if anyone does want pictures, I can pull those up. <laughs> Greg, do you need uh, permission from the town in order to tie into that existing catch basin that ultimately flows into James Brook? What do you need? Uh, excuse me, permission from the DPW, and what other uh, approvals would you need in order to do that? Yes, we would need permission from the DPW uh, for a street opening permit in order to do that. So, um, I'm sure Brian Joyce will be will be commenting on it. Um, I have not received comments from him yet. We have done that on similar projects, um, typically where we're showing where there's a reduction in the rates and volumes to the street drainage system. The site as it exists today, again, it's 100% impervious and has no storm water whatsoever on it. So it discharges in its entirety to the street today. Um, by proposing the landscaping areas, the reduction in impervious area, mm -hmm. and then the porous asphalt, it's a it's significant reduction. Um, in what's going to the street. And there's no building that's actually going to be over the easement. I see that the building is kind of shaped in a fashion that it does not, there's no excavation next to the James Brook uh, easement, correct? So there is there is excavation directly adjacent to the easement. Um, the mm -hmm. easement, you know, is approximately 20 feet wide and we have shaped the building so that the foundation is out of it in its entirety. Um, but there is, excavation adjacent to the easement so we'd be you know using right. a sheet pile you know to yeah. do that when the time comes the to second yeah. yeah the second floor um and third floor of the building do overhang the easement um there's no touching of the ground in the easement in that location with the building but they do overhang it we had discussion um with uh jason federico prior to him leaving the town of cohasset as well as with the building inspector you know, when we were doing the initial site layouts and it seemed like as long as we provided an adequate uh, height that they could get in under it in the future, that they seemed amenable to that. So I'm sure that's something that will probably be a topic of further discussion as we move forward, but uh, that seemed amenable to them. And then so there, the first floor of the retail building slash uh, residential is that going to be on a slab? Is there anything underground there? Is everything pretty much on slab here? It's pretty much all on slab. There might but be. But you will some... need to dig a frost footing. The, so you would you would always dig at least a four foot frost wall around the perimeter mm -hmm. of the building, um, and then underneath the first floor, I I don't have the architectural on me at the moment. There might be a small mechanical room in the basement. I'd have to double check that, but it's not a a full basement for the building, no. And the gas tanks are, they're, they're no longer there. They've already been excavated, cleaned out, cleaned up. Correct. The property owner had hired a licensed site professional to oversee the work. And I, I believe they've filed everything with the DEP as necessary for that. Did they have to do a 21E on this site? I, I believe they did. Okay. If, if, if that was done, could you, uh, could we get a copy of that, please? Sure. We Thank can you. definitely share that. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any uh, further questions here? It sounds like the this uh, other boards, the planning board will be weighing in on this that uh, and, and undergoing a stormwater review. So which could change, uh, potentially change this plan that's proposed in front of conservation. Uh, I have a couple. Okay, Tom. Uh, Mr. Morris, how um, how accurately do you know the location of the culvert within that easement? We located it by field survey. There are um, drain manholes above the culvert itself. Um, the culvert is centered on those manholes. So I would say it's, it's subsurface. So I would say it's probably plus or minus six inches, but it's, we have a, a very good degree of accuracy on it. Great. Um, so you're at elevation nine or 10 for your five car parking area that's um, 
pervious pavement. I guess I wonder um, how pervious the how how permeable the soil underneath it is, and whether it can actually it's never had to absorb any water, at least not for decades, because it's been paved over. So I'm just wondering how all that's going to work out. Uh, maybe your impervious pavement is got. The, the water really has nowhere to, to penetrate. It's compacted soil. Um, so have you guys done any, I guess the, my question is, have you done any um, soil tests out there, any test pits yet? Sure, there, there has been extensive digging at the site and you know I know soil borings were done. Um, it was a lot deeper to ledge than I anticipated at this site. I think ledge was found you know, 20 feet down or in excess of that, which shocked me to be honest with you um, a lot of the site isn't natural fill because over the years they've removed tanks and they've filled them in with sand and and vice versa um, so i am i understand your concern that's exactly the reason why we have the proposed catch basin uh, in the middle of the parking lot there i, I see not, so it sounds, sounds like you have plenty of plenty of potential storage in the subsurface there if they've used clean sand to uh, backfill we uh, some of that area. We do. And then so the catch basin really, I don't see the catch basin accepting much flow if everything works uh, well with the soil underneath. It's really there is just a, an emergency overflow, if you will, in case there was an issue. Uh, because that parking lot area is a depressed area that we are putting in, you know, slightly below grade. Uh, it's an emergency overflow in the event that there's a problem with the porous asphalt. So, so when the former occupant uh, had the tanks removed, they, as I understand it, they switched to uh, mechanics, right? They're working on cars there, but not, no longer yeah. running a filling station. So how did they capture their solvents? And, and um, you know, obviously they, they must have done oil changes and stuff like that. So did they have a central drain in the middle of their their uh, work area, did they have a, a lift in there, a uh, hydraulic lift in there? And, and is, should, there be, should we be concerned about, I guess, um, the interim period between after the tanks were removed, but there was still automotive work going on in there? Sure, I, I really can't speak to if there were lifts in the building or, or not. You know, typically if there were lifts, they would have been removed or, you know, if there was oil underneath the slab, it would have been removed by the licensed site professional, um, you know, that was tasked with cleaning it up. The, the 21E might shed some light on that. And I know Cassie, the applicant is on the line here. She might be able to shed some light on that, but I, I can't give you an answer on that. I can find out an answer. Todd, well, I, 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 think the I was just going to say that I can share that reporting. We did do uh, some testing there of both the water and the soil really close by there. So we can share that information with you. Great. Yeah. All right. And I think, Tom, as we received the 21E and any other work that was done uh, overseen by the LSP, we'll have a better indication of what was going on out there. Right. So Greg, the, the, as far as excavation goes, it's really just a frost wall around almost the entire, uh, any building that it, so it's really around the entire site basically would be at least a four foot wall. And then uh, probably some, some areas in the middle where you're gonna have uh, some concrete pilings, et cetera, in order to support the structure. But are you going, would you be going down any deeper than four feet here? I don't anticipate that we would, no. Okay. If you have any revised plans that come in, could you please state the elevation there on that? Because what, sure. what we see here is everything is obviously on slab. It's on pretty much on finished grade at the end of the day. Um, yep. So if you could indicate uh, the frost wall elevations on future plans, that would be great. Glad to. Okay. Uh, any comments from the audience? I do have one quick comment, Jay, um, yep. and it, it's not a, a, a big one, but Greg, I'm, I'm just, sorry, I muted myself. Your planting plan, how committed are you to the Bradford pears, trees? Um, here, is there is there another tree that you'd like to suggest? Because I this, this was put together by a registered landscape architect. Yeah. You know, I, I'd have to defer to his recommendation, but if there was something else to consider, I can certainly run it by him. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not uh, the expert. I just know that there's a lot of controversy with them with pollinators right now. And um, some states are considering them to be invasive. And there's probably are some pretty good native choices that might be helpful. So I just think it's something to, to think about. Um, and they're everywhere. Thank you. And Thank they're- you, Patricia. I, I think that's really helpful. We, we have spent a lot of time in the landscape um, design, but the, the guys, they're, they're from Cape Cod. They've done stuff in Cohasset. So I'll, I'll definitely take that feedback back to them. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll probably have some good ideas. I just know there's, they're, you know, they can, they can really become very thing. problematic, yeah. yeah. No one wants and, anything and, invasive down here. No. Give enough. And, and what I would also try and do is look at some of the other trees that are across the street and also on South Main Street that actually kind of fit in with the local aesthetics would be a, a good idea. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, any further questions from the commission? I they only had one that everyone else hadn't hit yet, and that was the uh, around the trees on the sidewalk, how they'll get water if that's a per pervious pavement there, if there's an opening large enough that they won't die in the sidewalk, that's all. I believe those would have tree grates on them, I, and it's okay. a brick sidewalk at that location with tree grates around them. Okay. We were planning for grates, that's correct. Okay, uh, Greg, obviously I think we're all in agreement that we can continue this hearing. Our next hearing is July 14th. I don't know that you'll have uh, any more information to submit to the commission, but is there was there a particular date you were looking to push this uh, meeting out to? Again, our next meeting is July 14th. I would say, I'm sorry, I think you broke up there. Your August meeting? Okay. Our uh, first so meeting in, uh, yep, sorry, our, our first meeting in August is, sorry, give me one sec, August 11th. Well, would August what? 11th work for you guys? Yes. Yes, we're on the agenda with planning board for July 13th, I believe it is. So I think August 11th would give us enough time to turn around anything. Um, Craig, do you agree? Yep, August 11th is a perfect amount of time. Great. Okay. okay. All right, great. great. The, this hearing is continued until August 11th. Thank you Thank so you. much, everyone. Yep. Thank you. All right, our next item on the agenda is NOI 22-14 is for 32 Heather Drive, a deck patio and plunge pool. I will read into the record the public uh, notice of public hearing. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Cohasset Wetlands Bylaw and the Cohasset Stormwater Bylaw, the Cohasset Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 30th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. via remote participation on a Zoom platform for Notice of Intent 22-24 to construct a deck patio and plunge pool within the 100-foot buffer zone to the wetland resource area at 32 Heather Drive for Richard Carroll. Good evening. Uh, I don't know who's going to represent the the applicant tonight, uh, but whoever is, if you feel free to obviously introduce yourself, uh, name and address for the record, and looks like we have uh, Richard and, and Morgan Carroll and Cameron uh, Larson as well. Yes. Uh, good evening, Commission. This is Cameron Larson with ECR. Be representing the applicant tonight to present the NOI for 32 Heather Drive and um, I'd be happy to proceed if the commission's ready and uh, if I could share my screen, that would be excellent. Great, thank you. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Richard Carroll and Morgan Carroll are in attendance tonight. <clears throat> they are the applicant and property owner for this project. Um, let's see, are you seeing that PDF I just pulled up? Yes. Excellent. Okay, so uh, 32 Heather Drive is a residential property. It's located at the eastern end of Heather Drive. It consists of a single family home, uh, paved driveway, surrounded by maintained lawn and landscaped areas, uh, very typical of the area. <clears throat> ECR completed a wetland delineation on the site. We located a bo uh, two bordering vegetated wetlands, one off site to the 
southeast seen here is the A series and then off to the uh, within the northwestern portion of the property labeled as the B series. Um, the plan also depicts the 50 foot buffer zone and 100 foot buffer zone that extend over the site. Um, the proposed project does fall within the sorry buffer zone. Sorry to interrupt, Cameron. Can you make it a little bit bigger for me? I'm sorry. I'm no just problem. trying to follow along. Gonna, uh, Thank you. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. And Thanks. How's that? It, it would help if you made that uh, PDF reader, reader full screen and also increased your uh, screen by Zoom to full screen. That's Perfect. Better. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so as I was mentioning, the... Uh, the buffer zones do extend over the, uh, the site. Um, the actual proposed project area is located within the buffer zone to these wetlands. Um, it is a buffer zone only project. There are no other wetland resource areas on this site um, and we are not proposing any work within the vegetated wetlands themselves. Um, the proposed project includes a deck, a plunge pool and a patio. Um, all this work is located beyond the 50 foot buffer zone to the wetlands. Um, it's also located in entirely within a previously developed portion uh, just to the rear of the home. Um, the deck and patio will be pervious. The patio will be constructed of pervious pavers. The deck will be a timbered deck uh, with spacing between the planks to allow for rainwater to flow through. Additionally, we're proposing to place gravel under that deck, as opposed to leaving it as uh, exposed soils to help with infiltration and uh, minimize the threat of any erosion or sedimentation. <clears throat> so the plunge pool itself will be the only additional pervious, uh, I'm sorry, impervious material, uh, in, impervious structure on the site. It's approximately 171 square feet in size. Um, it is a pool, so much of that, you know, rainwater during any storm event will be collected into the pool. So in reality, um, you know, it's kind of a small, small impact to the increase uh, of impervious material on the site. Um, we will be um, we will be utilizing erosion controls prior to uh, the com uh, the commencement of any work. Uh, once work is completed, any disturbed areas will be stabilized as lawn and landscape beds. Uh, we are proposing any landscape material to be native. We will pull directly from the Cohasset approved plant list. Um, and also a DEP sign will be installed prior to uh, the commencement of work. Uh, we have been issued a DEP file number. There were no comments from DEP. Um, staff was nice enough to provide us with some questions prior to the hearing. So we were able to address those, I think pretty adequately. Um, but if the commission has any questions at this point, I'd be happy to address those. And I can continue to share or turn it off. No, uh, I do notice there was a picture, which was a fantastic looking picture uh, of the actual plunge pool. If you have that available, I know Charlotte had that. Yes, if you could zoom out and that, that is worth a thousand words right there. So uh, is this, obviously it's a representative picture. It's not what's uh, what's currently there now, but is that pretty similar to what's going to be there? That's the idea, exactly. Okay, so is it basically sits? Up, it's 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 almost above ground. How deep is that? Yes, it's going to be mostly above ground. Um, you know, the idea is for the the top of the pool to sit flush with the deck. Um, yeah. So we're expecting you know to excavate down. You know, I think the estimates around eighteen inches. Um, okay. They will need. It will sit on a. Um, reinforced concrete pad, um, but much of it will be above ground. <clears throat> okay. Charlotte, do you have any comments on this? Yeah, so um, I was at the site and we did talk, uh, Richard, Richard and I did talk about, um, you know, that he is open to any potential uh, suggestions from the commission on native plantings. Right now, it's just a general note on the site plan that it'll be, you know, restored with loam and seed and landscape um, beds with, um, you know, native plant lists from the list. Uh, native plant species, sorry. And then um, just to clarify, we received a, um, a minor clarification from the contractor who will be doing the pool. Um, on the site plan, it says that it'll be quarter inch spacing for the deck, but the contractor said it'll be uh, 3 16th inch spacing. So there's just a, just a slight um, difference in the specified spacing. 
think that's a very minor change that nobody's gonna. <laughs> yeah, <six> <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna measure it. <laughs> spacing that we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't look for anyway. That's probably more of a building issue. Uh, if uh, Cameron, could you go back to the site plan a little bit? I appreciate you showing that picture. Thank you. All right. So as, as far as uh, equipment coming in, is the stockpile area, are they going to be coming in from the left side of the house? Um, how, are they, how are you going to get equipment back there? Yep. It's, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if we specified either the left side or the right side. There will be a little bit of encroachment into the buffer zone. It's all currently lawn, you know, so there'll be no need to widen any area or take out any vegetation. Um, but we will, we did identify, like you said, the, the stockpile area and equipment storage area. Um, you know, that we can maintain outside that 50 foot buffer zone. Okay. <clears throat> uh, comments from the commission? I'm just clarifying, this is all outside the 50, but within the 100 foot, correct? That's correct. Not hearing any comments from the commission? Okay, I don't, I don't have any. My only comment would be as far as uh, excavation equipment. I mean, you're going to have to encroach upon the 50 in order to get, with, no matter which way you go. I wouldn't imagine you would go in front of the house unless you really hug the house there because they're of the contour lines coming around. I would imagine you'd probably go the other way. Uh, my only comment is to not, I, I'd imagine you could probably do any excavation if you were going, first of all, let me ask you, do you plan on having any heavy equipment back there to do the excavation? Like I said, they're not planning to excavate down too deep. So I think the, you know, as small a machine as they can use for that you know, no. would be. And, and how are they going to pour that slab? Is that going to be by, by pump, by hand? You're not going to get a concrete truck back there. Yeah, I don't, again, it's a, it's a very small pad. So I don't expect the need for any, any heavy <clears throat> equipment for that either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my understanding from the contractor that it would be by pump or by hand, they wouldn't be bringing anything back there. Yeah, well, I, I don't think you'd be able to get anything back there no. either. No, yeah. you wouldn't. Okay. Any further comment? All right, not hearing any comment, uh, Jay Pimpari will make a motion to issue a an order of conditions for the project at 32 Heather Drive. We'll do this by roll call vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Tom Bell. Oh, Mr. Chair. Give you, give you a second. Yes. Yeah, oh, sorry. I'll, I'll give you the second. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, motion by the chair, uh, second by Mr. Bell. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pampare, aye. Uh, it, there's no work to be done in the 50 foot buffer other than just installing the silt sock. But for the, the sake of this, I will make a motion to issue a variance for the work in the 50 foot buffer zone to simply install the, uh, the erosion barrier, uh, siltation barrier in the 50 foot buffer uh, for a work for a variance in the 50 foot buffer zone. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is second by Will Ashton. All those in favor, please say aye. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpari, aye. That vote passes 4-0. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good luck on the project. Yep. Have Thank you. Night. Good luck. The next item of business this evening is a stormwater permit 22-15 for 175 Lambert's Lane golf course update. This is a hearing that was continued from June 2nd, uh, 2022. Just for the record, I was not in attendance uh, for, of this meeting. However, I have listened to the tape and I have submitted an affidavit to uh, the town that I have listened to the tape and am fully prepared to participate in the hearing this evening. Also, just for the record here, there was a site visit that was uh, performed last week. I don't remember exactly what day it was. I think it was Tuesday. Uh, was it Tuesday, Charlotte? Yeah, it was last Tuesday. Okay, last Tuesday in which uh, Tom Bell and myself were out there along with Charlotte to do a site visit of the, uh, of the location. 
So I'm familiar with the site as you are, Tom. We did a little walkthrough out in the back there. Uh, you more than me, but uh, I'm ready to listen to the application this evening. Uh, Jeff, I guess I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Jay. Uh, Jeff Asset here, uh, civil engineer with Morris Engineering here on behalf of the Cohasset Golf Club. Um, from the Cohasset Golf Club, I be, believe Gary Baldino and Glenn Missiasic are on the call. And also their representative, Adam Brodsky. Charlotte, do you want to do you want to pr promote attorney Brodsky at all? I see you promoted yep. Gary and Glenn. Yep. He's uh, he's coming on right now. Great. So uh, thank you again. Um, as Jay noted, this is a continued public hearing. We presented it originally on June 2nd. And um, it, the project is to construct new maintenance buildings. Um, to give you a brief overview, there are cu currently four maintenance buildings when you first pull into the maintenance area. That Jeff, are would you mind, sorry, would you mind uh, sharing the screen if you have the schematic? I think that would help everybody out. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. There you go, perfect. And obviously just zoom that in a little bit. Thank you very much. So when you first pull into the property, there is a gas pump and four maintenance, maintenance buildings that are older and in poor condition. Uh, they are gonna be demolished and then the parking lot reconfigured there um, in order to, um, it'll end up being more pervious, more loam and seed than currently exists. Then um, towards the rear of the main maintenance building, they're gonna construct a new facility made up of three buildings. And all the storm run water runoff from the buildings and from the parking area will be captured either in the gutters or in catch basins, and then piped to a sediment four bay for treatment and an infiltration basin. Uh, we did perform all the storm water calculations, which show that the rates and volumes of runoff are reduced. Um, since the last meeting, we submitted revised plans on June 15th, and they address comments um, expressed by the commission at the first hearing, as well as the agent. Um, some of the comments were extending the mulch sock, uh, putting a note on the plan directing the contractor to the O&M plan included in the, in the stormwater report, uh, providing notes of, regarding equipment storage and wash areas, keeping them in level areas as far as possible from the wetlands, uh, noting that the contractor will require a NIPTES permit, um, locating all trees greater than 12 inch caliper as required under the bylaw. Uh, we provided a cut fill plan and we provided more detail on how the slopes will be stabilized uh, around, the, around the buildings and the parking lot. So there's one location where we're proposing one and a half to one slopes right in this corner and they will be stabilized with riprap. We call that out on sheet five and we detail it on sheet six. Other you than jump that, to that slopes... sheet there, uh, Greg, I'm, uh, Jeff, I'm sorry. Sure. So this corner here is where, the, where it's a uh, one and a half to one grading. Okay. And that will be riprap. And we do have a construction detail for a riprap slope. There it is. Okay. Is there a uh, filter fabric underneath that, a geofabric? There is. Yeah. Okay. A filter fabric followed by six inches of gravel and then 12 inches of angular four to eight inch rock. Okay. Great. And then the Thank other you. slopes are two to one and they're called out to be stabilized with a loam mm -hmm. and then New England erosion control restoration mix for dry sites. Um, typically, Slopes two to one or or gentler uh, do not need raw do, do not need stone as reinforcement. So okay. these plans that we're looking at now have been um, we've they've been peer reviewed and we have a letter from the peer review consultant stating that we've addressed all of their comments. We also staked out the project in the field, as you noted, we had a site walk, and the projects were uh, the project was also approved by the planning board last week. So at this time, we feel we have addressed all the comments um, and we're hoping we can move forward with a stormwater permit. Thank you very much. So do you, uh, you mentioned the planning board has approved it. Are there any other boards that would need to approve this project? No, there are no other boards. Um, we've also responded to comments though as, from, as part of the peer, uh, part of the planning board pro, uh, review process. 
from the fire department, uh, the water department, um, and DPW. Okay. Uh, one of my questions was whether or not there would be uh, any water in any of the storage buildings or any discharge of water, bathrooms, et cetera. And as you mentioned, the site visit that the answer to that was no, there, there's no uh, running water other than a sprinkler system in those buildings that are up there. So that there's nothing to worry about with respect to a discharge, et cetera. That, that's exactly correct. Uh, Charlotte, any, any further questions on or issues on your part? Um, no, but I'll just mention that uh, during the site visit, we also discussed that the uh, ledge um, would be blasted, not chipped. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's one clarification. And then, um, you know, given that this is going to be a, a big project, um, our stormwater permit has uh, template conditions about, you know, just notifying us in writing when construction is about to start. But we could, you know, if we wanted to set up any pre-construction meeting, uh, for erosion control meeting with, you know, anybody before the um, construction starts, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I would encourage any uh, applicant uh, moving forward with a, any construction project, obviously, to reach out uh, to the town in advance of that. Uh, any, any, any comments from the commission? Uh, I, is this on sanitary sewer or is this uh, a septic system? They're on a septic system. All of the, in the main building, which is remaining here, is where the restrooms and the lockers are. And that will, they'll continue to operate in that manner. They'll park adjacent to that building. These buildings are more for, or for storage only, really. There won't be any plumbing. And the only plumbing up there is obviously for the uh, sprinkler system. There's no, so there's no running water. Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, is this, uh, the, uh, on municipal water, or is there a well near? Municipal water. That's all I, I have nothing more. Any further comments from the commission? Not hearing any uh, further comments, Jay Pampari make a motion to issue a stormwater permit for the project at 175 Lambert's Lane. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Will Ashton. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye after I repeat your name. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpare, aye. That vote passes uh, four to zero. Good luck with the project, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Our next item of business this evening is also a continuation. It is for stormwater permit 22-13. This is Situate Hill uh, commercial development. There's nothing to read into the record because this is a continuation. Charlotte, if you could please promote anyone who's gonna represent uh, Situate Hill. This evening. Sorry, my eyes my eyes skipped. It's, it's still Jeff Hassett from uh, Morse Engineering. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> You're earning your pay tonight, Jeff. <laughs> I'm back. So th this is a pretty similar project. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen. Thank you. Yep, it, it's similar in that it's a, a continued public hearing. We originally presented this project on May 25th um, and it's a stormwater permit only. There's, there are no wetland resource areas on the property or within the vicinity. The project is a contractor style project. There are three buildings that will be located at the end of Situate Hill. The stormwater system is, is unique in that there's already an infiltration basin that was, uh, that's been constructed and it was designed and peer reviewed and, um, and sized to handle the development of this property. And Jeff, would, you, would you mind just blowing that up, please? Sorry. Yep. Thank you. So th this um, this development has about 20% less impervious than the assumptions made when that infiltration basin was sized. So naturally, it's um, the infiltration basin is large enough. Uh, we did rerun the numbers showing that it is a, a reduction in the peak rates and volumes of runoffs for all storm events. At the last hearing, we continued it really for two items. 
One was to locate the trees, which we have done. The only portion of the property that's wooded, wooded with mature trees that would be greater than 12 inch caliper is this area here. Uh, we located those trees shown on sheet three and there are 16 of them that will, would need to be removed. Uh, the second reason we continued the project was for a peer review and that peer review has been completed. We submitted revised plans dated June 24th, which addressed the peer review comments, uh, comments from the fire chief, the planning board and the traffic consultant. So this is another project where we feel we've addressed all the comments and we are hoping to, uh, to proceed with the, uh, with the vote. Thank you very much. Jeff, can you put the, uh, the building diagram on there uh, schematic, please? The one you, you just had up there. Oh, yes. And Charlotte, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if Paul Davis, you see applicant, if he's on the line, if you could uh, promote him. Yes, thank you. Paul, just, uh, Paul is in the audience. Yeah, thank you. Jeff, do you, uh, maybe it's on another plan here, so I apologize, but do you have uh, a contour uh, or I do. topographic view here as far as what we're dealing with? I know it slopes off to, there we go, perfect. So as far as there looks like there's going to be a, a, a cut through maybe like half of the existing well, not, it's not existing now, but the footprint of these buildings. Is it fair to say that there's going to be a cut there? That, that's correct. Around this area of the project, yeah. it's, it's, it's even. And then there's a cut on the uphill side and a fill on the downhill side. Okay. Charlotte, do you have any, uh, any further comment? Uh, actually, I just had one follow-up question, Jeff, if that's okay. So looking at the, um, all the responses from the peer reviewer, it looks like, uh, there might be a couple things pending. One at least seems to relate to stormwater. Uh, it says the operation and maintenance plan does not reference the existing detention basin. The applicant should confirm who has responsibility for ongoing and long-term maintenance. And then it just says, you know, that the applicant's currently researching this. And if a responsible party cannot be found, the applicant will assume responsibility. Um, we could potentially you know, request to just see an updated long-term maintenance plan, you know, whenever that's figured out. But I think that was my only comment. And then the other one was just uh, one of the comments from the water department. Uh, they said flow testing will be required to determine if there's adequate flow and volume to reach the structures, maybe plausible booster pump may be required. So if there's any updates to the site plan, we have to update a booster pump or something. It can just be, you know, noted as a minor change. Sure, yeah, as far as maintenance of that infiltration basin, um, the applicant has agreed in, in writing in the letter to the planning board that if that he will assume responsibility for that um, and, and prepare an O&M plan if, the, if we can't locate it. But I, I assume there is one. I can't imagine there wouldn't be one from when the road was designed and permitted. It's just, you know, it's in the archives. Um, yeah. Is the, is the uh, detention basin on the property or is it on another parcel? This is a, a private roadway and there's an infiltrate there's it's within an easement on the property. Not on the subject property, but on a property that is also has frontage on situate health. Okay, so it's so so the retention basin is not on the applicant's property. Nope, it's on an easement on a property adjacent to it. Okay. And how does it get down there, Jeff? Is, is there how what what is the uh, the flow? Uh, I know obviously is it's highly elevated over there, but how is it going to flow down there? Yeah, so there's um, there are catch basins and manholes in Situate Hill that you know capture the water and pipe it behind the storage building and then down infiltrate uh, discharging into the basin. There is a stub that was left here where we are connecting our catch basins and uh, manholes to. the diameter of that uh, uh, sufficient to convey all of the um, runoff for a 1% storm? It, it is. Um, they were sized in um, order to accommodate uh, about two acres of, of impervious on this property. And we're coming in at, in at about 1.56 acres. So they, they will have plenty of uh, capacity. Being on a hillside too, they have a lot of pitch. Okay. 
It sounds like this is obviously it's undergone a peer review. I know Charlotte has been very involved in this project and, and following it all along. I know there's been a lot of back and forth, obviously. So thank you, Charlotte, for staying on top of this and for uh, other boards and peer reviews to be uh, to be involved with this project. Uh, it sounds like it's certainly covered uh, most of the bases, if not all of them. Uh, I don't have any any further comment. Uh, commissioners have any further comments on this one? Okay, not hearing any further comment. Uh, Jay Pimpari will make a motion to issue a stormwater permit for uh, the stormwater permit 22-13 for Situate Hill commercial development. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye after a we need say a second. Your name. I'll give it oh. to you. <laughs> You're out of practice. Do I, okay. do I hear a second? Yes. Second okay. by Tom Bell. All those in favor, please say aye. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpare, aye. That vote passes four to zero. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good luck with the project. Thank you. The uh, next item of business is uh, 20 Nichols Road it is a notice of intent 22-23 as a landscaping project. This project is uh, being continued from June 16th, uh, 2022. Just uh, Charlotte, if you wouldn't mind uh, promoting yes. um, the uh, so applicant and their representatives. While you while you're doing that, Charlotte, I just want to note that um, while I wasn't present for the original presentation on the 16th, I did watch the video and sign the affidavit, which is thank you. Um, yeah, you're all set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just for the record, this is a continuance from uh, from June 16th. Uh, just last week, I forget the days. Was it Wednesday, Charlotte? Was this one? Oh, geez. Is this Wednesday? Uh, I think this one was Tuesday, and I'm sorry, I might have messed up. Uh, yeah. The golf course was last Wednesday on the 22nd, and then this one was Tuesday on the 28th. Sorry. Gotcha. So last Tuesday, there was a site visit. There were actually two site visits. There was a site visit in the morning, which I believe a couple of commissioners were present for. Uh, I was uh, present for the afternoon uh, site visit. Uh, thank you for agreeing to reschedule that. I was out there uh, Tuesday afternoon at one o'clock. I did meet with uh, Brendan, the homeowner, and I did meet with uh, Charlotte. So thank you for uh, for uh, taking the time for the second site visit. So again, this is a continuation uh, of a project uh, of some vegetation, uh, landscaping, etc. I will turn it over to the applicant. I don't know who's who wants to speak tonight, but whoever is, would you mind just please sharing your screen and putting up the schematic or, or, or talking us through it at the from the onset here, giving us a quick little overview from where we picked up last time, last time and if any changes to the plan have been made. Before I just shared my screen, this is Deb Keller with Maryland. Yep. So there's, I was at the morning site walk, um, so I missed you, Jay, but uh, Mr. Bell was there and we did walk the site as well. Um, so since the last hearing, um, we did have the sidewalk. Um, I believe um, Mr. Bell. Uh, Deb, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you're, you're a little bit faint out of, of there. If you wouldn't mind maybe just speaking a little closer to the microphone, uh, if that helps a, a little bit, that would be great. Thank you, sorry. No, pro no problem, is that better? A little better, thank you. Okay, here, let's see if I can bump up my volume. Um, so, uh, as I have a zoom in on the screen, we have um, Kath Kathleen Murphy, the homeowner, is on, on the meeting as well as Brendan McCarthy. He is the uh, landscaper from Skyline. Um, and I'm going to pass it off to Brendan to start um, as he's um, better at describing all of the uh, restoration and plantings that they, the owners would like to do on the site. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so what we are proposing here is um, we are, we're swapping out a pre-existing walkway along with um, the patio areas. 
Um, and we are also proposing landscape plantings as well as a mowed path um, that goes through those plantings. Um, purpose of the mowed path is uh, the homeowners, the clients have uh, some family members with accessibility issues. Um, there's also a meadow area um, which is under uh, some trees there to the north. Yep, that area right there, um, which is uh, going to be a seed mix of, of a variety of native grasses and plants. Um, I think all of this work is within the 50. I think the entire house is within the 50, if I'm not mistaken. We can pull the other plant up later um, if you want to see that. And we also are dealing with a coastal bank um, environment here. So again, everything that we're proposing is just a replacement of a pre-existing condition. Um, and more specifically on the bank area, um, the pre-existing condition has, uh, what was a, is a man-made um, landscape, um, which was created by previous homeowners in the past. We're not sure exactly when. Uh, the majority of that is all non-native plant material, uh, with the exception of a couple, um, Ilex glabra, so inkberry holly. Um, and what we are proposing is um, removal of all non-native plant material and replanting as shown on this uh, planting plan. Uh, additionally, after um, having the site visit, uh, we sort of came to the conclusion as a group that we should actually add more um, woody shrubs to this planting plant. So we will have uh, an updated version. Essentially, we would look to add, say, five to seven native shrubs um, to provide better cover and habitat for the local wildlife um, and to better replicate uh, a more complete coastal bank area. Um, I guess I would add that um, I, I'm a certified arborist and I will also be overseeing and pretty much conducting most of this work um, with my crew. We're, I'm a, we have a small company and I, as the owner, am pretty much on all of the projects. So I'll be there to conduct the work as well as follow up with the maintenance and any plant replacements that are needed uh, in this area. Obviously, we know that the coastal bank is a very sensitive, important type of habitat, and uh, we are really proposing, uh, it's, it's not truly a restoration in the, the legal sense of, of the word, but um, we're looking at it as a restoration where we're swapping out plants that don't provide a whole lot of um, ecological benefit to the area with the native plants, which come from the Cohasset uh, native plant list. So. We really think it is sort of a win-win. The homeowner gets um, a nicer looking, uh, so the current landscape is, is really overgrown, full of weeds and, and just more or less unsightly. Um, so we are going to improve the look of the property as well as improving uh, the ecological function of, of the coastal bank. Um, we are proposing to do this without bringing in any foreign soil. Um, we're going to use the native soil, um, which should be adequate. Um, obviously, there is a little bit of regrading involved there. Uh, the existing conditions, there's a, there's a small retaining wall um, close to the proposed uh, walkway area. So that area would get regraded slightly, um, but that would be the extent of, you know, the major and, and I wouldn't even call that major, but there is some earth moving involved in that. Um, the area to the north, which is the um, seed mix. Could, could, could you see in on these areas? Um, particularly, particularly the last subject you were talking about is uh, the amount of grading that you might do. So if you can, I think you're controlling it right. Now. Could you zoom in on that um, pathway, please? I'm going to pan over to the um, the pole so that you can see that this will come in a little bit better. Well, close. Yeah, sort Sorry, of I want to see those contour lines. Yes. There you go. So, that's, so, that's good. Thanks. 
Jeez. Yeah. So as as you can see there, we're not proposing to alter the contour um, very much. We we want to make it. Uh, the, the location of the path was chosen based on essentially the path of least resistance over the existing contour. Okay. Um, should I continue with the meadow area? Yeah, and, and as Brendan, as you and I, uh, or I asked and, and you answered the question about as far as uh, any heavy equipment being brought in, it was my understanding that for the, the, the sloped area at the top there where you're moving the mouse around there, yeah, that would all be done by hand. There would no, be no heavy machinery being brought in. And, uh, and if needed down in the meadow area down below as well, where the uh, juniper trees are, et cetera, that could also be done by hand, is that correct? Um, we would need some form of equipment in that location um, in order to dismantle the wall. For the wall, correct, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the, the plant material, which is existing, would be cut with a chainsaw by hand. Um, I would like to remove some of the larger stumps um, if that's possible. Um, that would be machine work. We would we'd be pulling the stumps and removing as much of the soil from them as possible to allow that to remain on the site. Uh, is that just the juniper trees? The juniper it would, shrubs? It basically, yeah, yeah. It's the juniper yeah. trees, which is the, the issue that's they're the largest item that we need to remove. Could you uh, could you tie a, a tie down around that and pull them up or? We could try. I mean, going uphill, we, obviously we would be working from the top there. We wouldn't have a, yeah. a, something pulling down below. Yeah. We could attempt. Oh, we, well, I, I guess would, you could work. You could work upslope and and not not be down in the grassy area. Correct. I do. I do not need to be down in that grass whatsoever. Okay. I'll be up from the top um, the whole time with, during that operation. Yeah. Okay. And where, oh, I see the erosion control barrier there. Okay, right. So there, there, there obviously the erosion control barrier is there. Uh, I think you could probably tighten that up a little bit as well so that there would be really no nothing down in the grassy area at all and you could work up gradient. Uh, okay. okay. Um, yep, and so then the last remaining item I think was the meadow area just to the north there. Um, and what we're proposing there is is that is 100% handwork, no heavy equipment. I think Justin and Tom, you both had a chance to take a look at that uh, and see the steepness of that slope. Also noted the areas that are sort of washing out currently. Um, there's there was one or two largish areas um, where you could see visibly the gravel and the rock that had been starting to uh, sort of erode on that really steep slope. Um, part, part of that issue there is um, there's just a lot of tree roots um, from the pre-existing trees, but what we are proposing um, is minimally invasive and with the intention of actually stabilizing the slope, we're not looking to destabilize the slope at all. Um, we want to preserve the slope in its current condition and the plan to do that is to add the coastal seed mix um, and in order to get good germination on that seed mix, we will need to cut by hand the existing vegetation uh, that's all along that slope. Um, some of it may be native, but others, I think the majority is, is probably um, sort of just weedy non-native material, which would get cut to the ground and it would be allowed to obviously regenerate, um, but in order to get germination and good soil seed contacts, it would get cut, raked down slope, brought out in barrels, uh, no machines involved, and we would hand sow all the seed and you know, follow up irrigation would be set up. Brendan, just to be clear, when you say you're going to uh, cut the vegetation, no trees are being- No removed. trees, no That's trees, only, herb yeah. only herbaceous vegetation. Yep. Yeah. So as, as I understand for uh, for the rest of the, co the commissioners here, and just to reiterate that 
uh, in that area that you are talking about, there, there are actually there are no trees of any uh, large caliber being cut down. There are actually no trees at all being cut down in that area. As you mentioned, uh, some minimal vegetation would be scraped back. There would be uh, the, the areas uh, that, are, that are low in elevation would be kind of moved around and filled in a little bit. And then a seed mix would be put back down um, so that as we discussed, if the project were to be completed in the next you know, eight, nine months or so, that this time next year uh, or you know next fall, when, when if you looked at it from the sky and looked down, you would actually be looking at a grassy area and you probably never even know that the area was disturbed uh, because it's, although it's disturbed, it's, it's replaced with, grass is being replaced with, with grass there now. Uh, it doesn't appear that, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. The goal yeah. is to have it look like a naturalistic meadow. Yeah. And uh, no soil is being proposed to be brought into the site. You'll try and shake off all existing uh, soil from the plants or any removal of uh, vegetation. So there's, there's not an expectation for any soil to be brought in, correct? That's correct. No new soil yeah. will be brought in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and again, no, no, uh, no trees are being proposed to be removed. And I say a tree, anything, you know, larger than like a two or three inch caliber. Correct. Uh, and, and as we just uh, discussed, if there, uh, most of the, most of the work would be, all of the work on that slope would be done by hand. The only work that would need uh, heavy machinery would be for, it looks like uh, on the top side of the coastal bank there, the repair of that. A uh, little wall, obviously, would if you could scroll that down just a little more. the The wall itself would need uh, would need heavy uh, some type of machinery, but that's well out of the fifty. The only work that's really being proposed in the fifty foot buffer here, and and thank you, looks like the the burnt out orange line that's going across there. Uh, it, is it safe to say that if this project were uh, to go forward, that any the machinery would be upgrading of the 50 foot buffer and you could remove any vegetation that were there uh, without having any heavy machinery in the 50 foot buffer i would say that that's reasonable we should be able to do that yeah yep. i mean uh i'll turn it over to charlotte if you had any questions or comments and then i, I do have some other uh comments that, that i wanted to make but charlotte do you have any any uh, anything you want to add to this Sure. Yeah. Kind of reiterating a few of your points, uh, Mr. Chair, the, you know, as we discussed, um, the heavy machinery, I believe, should be clarified in the order of conditions of, you know, not being allowed in the 50 foot buffer, um, you know, no fill being brought in could be a condition as well. And then uh, Brendan mentioned that they would be revising the planting plan just a little bit to add more uh, woody shrubs, I believe five to seven native shrubs. Um, so if we wanted to condition the project that a revised plan be submitted within a certain time frame that has those changes, um, that would be preferable to issue an order of conditions with the updated site plan. Uh, exactly how many shrubs would you, be, do you have an idea of what you would be proposing to swap out? And by the way, I do support um, some extra wooded shrubs in there. Do you know how many you, you, you're, you're talking about here and what particular area? And yeah. obviously we would yeah. want to revise the plan, but what, what, what's the proposal for the woody, woody shrubs? Um, I see them being placed on either side of the mowed grass path um, along the course up toward the patio. Um, and I think they would just alternate probably on either side um, of the path and in the areas that the shrubs will get located, you know, you'll see a slight reduction in the herbaceous material that's, that's there. Um, I would say mm -hmm. for every shrub that we add, we may subtract uh, three or four. Uh, we'll have to do the layout obviously in order to uh, get the true numbers, but we're, we'll, we're happy to do that. Um, and as far, as far as the types of shrubs, we'd be, you know, looking to the, to the plant list, but I, I would imagine bayberry, um, more ilex glabra, which is already pre-existing there, so we can add to that. Um, maybe winterberry, ilex verticillata, um, all stuff that you would generally find in, in that type of environment. 
Do you have a number of how many shrubs you you would add? Um, we can. So we need to, you know, look at the plan obviously and figure out uh, what fits with the scale of of the existing planting. But I think between five and seven is is definitely achievable and um, appropriate. Okay. Uh, comments from the commission. I do have some comments, but I'll. I'll save them for a moment if anybody has any any comments here yeah um so i did go on a, uh, a site visit and um had a, had a look at it which was really valuable to get a feel for both the topography and the setting and the neighborhood and i have a couple of comments about each of those i guess uh, to start with the area on the north, uh, it does look like it has some modest uh, propensity to, for erosion. Uh, I'm not sure that grasses are going to stabilize uh, baseball size rocks that are um, peaking out in bare earth areas there. So um, I'm not sure that that's going to be very effective in terms of an erosion control means. Um, nevertheless, I, what, one of the things that, uh, well, let me ask uh, Mr. McCarthy, do you, what, what, when do you plan to do this? When, when would you do that particular part of this? Um, well, the overall project, of course, if we approve, will be dictated by the homeowner. But in terms of um, planting season, uh, typically when we do a meadow mix uh, of that nature, it's done in mid to late October. Uh, the reason for that is we're trying to simulate um, the natural process of those plants, which meaning uh, the plants would flower typically in the fall and then, uh, I'm sorry, in the summer and then through the fall, they would produce their seeds, which then get dropped late fall. And most of the plant material needs a um, cold stratifying period during the winter in order for them to germinate correctly the following spring. So the seed mix goes down in October and we're looking for germination the following spring. So, so um, one of my concerns is denuding that slope uh, while everything still, it, it, ha it hasn't died back yet. So you're going, you're going to, um, essentially remove all the annuals off of that. And then there's going to be, and I know you're going to use a, um, uh, a fiber carpet essentially to stabilize the slope. I, I'm just wondering uh, if, if it makes more sense it, from, for another number of reasons I'll bring up later, but, but to wait until that, that vegetation is completely dead and maybe you don't have to remove it at all. Yeah, well, that's actually, that is part of the plan would be to, when we do the seeding would be um, October when pretty much all of that plant material would be either dead or at least kind of senescing into the winter period. So um, in the process of removing that material, I think we would also be dislodging whatever seeds were left over from that season on those particular plants. So it would almost be like a double sort of seeding event that's happening there where we're just kind of supplementing to that. But I do think that we need to remove the material. Um, if we don't do that, we won't be able to effectively um, get good seed soil contact with the, with the seed we are bringing in. Uh, you're also disturbing the soil. I mean, I, I understand that the soil, the site preparation, surface preparation to, to uh, get better germination, but but on this fairly steep slope, you're, as you pull those out, you're pulling them to roots and all, or are you gonna just cut them off? We're just cutting them off. Okay, so you're not gonna disturb the- No, the, we don't want to disturb the underlying soil. Okay, so I think that part of the plan is, is it looks really sound to me. I think it's warranted. Um, the, well, let me just back up a little bit and point out that the neighborhood, um, you have a you have a Nichols Road pass right there. People are looking at the houses around there. They're looking up up the uh, 
um, the inlet's length there and taking in the scenery and stuff. And at some point, there's going to be a lot of disruption going on here, not necessarily in the area we were just talking about, but in the area we're going to remove those junipers. And you've, I know you've said a lot to uh, assure us that this is not going to be very disruptive, but those are all junipers. And the, pulling those out, uh, even partially getting some of the roots out of there and um, creating this mode trail is going to be something of an eyesore for a few weeks anyway. And, and uh, one of our, the, the commission's concern has always been the precedence that we set on Coastal Bank or the 50 foot buffer. I'm not even focused on the 50 foot buffer here. I'm looking at this as the Coastal Bank, which is also a, uh, really the most more important um, uh, resource, protected resource here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely comfortable with your plan for that part of the yard. Uh, it just, I, I can, in my mind's eye, I can see a lot of either a lot of people out there with uh, picks and shovels or or um, some means of tearing off the existing vegetation and having a bald patch there. Meanwhile, your neighbors, the neighbor, the applicant's neighbors are going back and forth. And, and I think we've characterized this in various other times of uh, it might go through their minds, well, if they can do it, we can do it. And so this is, this is I think, the conundrum that the, the commission faces whenever we talk about a variance to work in the resource area itself. And that, that is what we're talking about here. We're not in the buffer. We're, we're in one buffer for the wetland um, resource, but we're right in the middle of the resource for the coastal bank. And so, so those are my concerns that, that right there front and center, full view of the road, there's going to be a lot of stuff torn out. Yes, it'll be replaced and I'm sure it'll look great in a year. Meanwhile, like I say, people are driving back and forth and some of them may wonder, why can't I do this? How, how, how would you, what can you say to that? Um, well, I, I certainly understand the concern uh, given the high visibility of the location. Um, but I also would hope that, you know, the, the applicants, the homeowners would be given an equal chance to have work done at their house, regardless of the location, um, assuming that the work being requested is is reasonable um, and an improvement to to the coastal bank. Um, regarding the length of time uh, it may take and the, I guess, eyesore factor, um, if if we are allowed to proceed with, you know. The conditions that we just discussed, um, the bank could be essentially cleared out in a day or two, and we could honestly replant in three or four days. So, assuming that this really isn't a massive project, um, and assuming you know good favorable weather conditions and uh, no other unforeseen delays, um, I think the project could be wrapped up, the planting portion of the project, I'm not talking about the uh, hardscape areas, but the planting portion, you know, could be wrapped up within say seven business days total. Um, and I feel pretty confident uh, about that. Uh, we've done many projects similarly sized and that's essentially the time frame that I'm allocating for this, for this project. For the record, uh, no homeowner has the right to operate or change the coastal bank. That's why there's a variance that would be granted. So this is not um, being treated like every, if we if we treat this like everybody else, then we're going to vote no. Because we have been pretty fairly strict about work on the coastal bank. Understood. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 I want to jump in here and um, I, I support uh, all of uh, Tom's comments. I was 
kind of make some of the very similar comments. I think you know this this project is really broken up into three pieces here. The the, the first piece is really the hardscape along the top, along the patio, etc. I, I didn't hear anything in the first hearing, and I'm, I'm not hearing anything so far this evening that there's there's any concerns for that. Uh, the the second part of that is the uh, it's kind of the scraping of the existing vegetation to try and put down a seed to further stabilize uh, the bank on the northern, I guess that's at the northern northwestern side of the property. Uh, there's no, there are no trees proposed to being removed there. Uh, it was really nice to go out there and, and see it live. And, you know, when you see it on the schematic here and you look at it and you think like I did have a difficult time supporting that. But when you go out there and look at it and you really see that there's not much vegetation really there, it's just kind of a little overgrown grass. And hopefully with uh, some rakes and moving it around and some seed mix that that it would stabilize the bank and it would it would further serve its purpose over there. And then and then the third piece is what Tom was just talking about there is that um, with the walkway going right through the middle there, there there is. Yes, there is a little piece of that that is within the 50 foot buffer zone. If anybody in this commission and anybody listening in the audience tonight knows I've been an extremely uh, strong supporter of protecting the, the 50 foot buffer zone, et cetera. You know, so it, from the onset, I, it was, I was, I have to say, I was not very supportive of, uh, of any removal of vegetation, having gone out there and looking at, at it a little bit more. Uh, I'm, I, I feel, uh, a little better knowing that you're gonna there's a proposal to put some of the wooded shrubs back in that area that's why i was trying to get a, a solid number from you and you said five to seven wooded shrubs i guess you know my comment is is there any way to actually leave a couple of those juniper trees that are sitting right down in that little 50 foot buffer area and still continue on with the project by cleaning out all of the invasives, the weeds and everything else that's all upgrading of that. Cause it's it's really just, and, and I know it might not sound much, but there, there is that piece that's still in the 50 foot uh, buffer zone. There are those junipers have been there for who knows how long. Uh, and I, so I, my question to you is, is there is there any consideration to keeping a couple of those junipers there all the while, you know, continue on with the, with the rest of the project and, and still taking out a couple of the junipers, um, but just keeping a few of them down at the bottom of the hill there. Yeah, we can certainly look at that. Um, I, if I had to make a sort of rough guess, I would say that the juniper covers probably 65% of the, um, that planted area so yeah. and so as far as like square footage goes yeah uh, on that area and, and it might be even better to to pull up the the well i don't know there's no, probably not another plan but it, it, when you're looking at the walkway there from the from the grassy area yeah pulling right up there it's just this this little bottom area to the right side of the of the walkway it's there's 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 a i don't know whether it's six feet of juniper there give or take yeah. is my guess yeah, um, we could definitely look at that um, if, if that's something that would um, make the project more appealing to the commission. It would be, I don't know how you feel about it, Tom, but personally it would make me feel a little bit better if we saved a couple of those junipers at the bottom of the, of the bank there. Yeah, I, I guess my, my concern isn't really about any specific plants here. It's, uh, and, and again, Jay, I just point out that the coastal bank is the resource here. The 50 foot buffer is almost irrelevant. Here. I feel, you know, as Brendan did point out, I feel a little bit more confident. There's, there's no heavy machine. It's, we're, we're not, it's just, it's not a, right. We're not replacing it with a driveway. We're not replacing it with, we're, we're replacing it with, we're taking existing vegetation and replacing it with, with further additional vegetation. And the wooded shrubs, I think, would be a big benefit. 
anything outside the 50, we don't have as much control of that. We're trying to protect the, the area in the 50 foot buffer. And so what I was alluding to is like the first couple of feet there in that diagram or the, this picture here is there's a lot of juniper, but if you could save, you know, the first couple of feet there, uh, I think that would keep in line with stabilizing the bank. And if you say you could turn this project around in, you know, a week or so, so that there is not a uncovered area and further from the plan, it can be uh, some, in my view, some, I'm only one vote here, but some vegetation removed and then put in, you know, three or four days later or a couple days later that there's not as, you know, there's less disturbance there. And in the work we're talking about, yeah, it, it, it's outside the 50 foot buffer, but is it in the bank? Yeah, it's in the bank. I think that this image is, is very helpful. Um, Deb, thanks for pulling that up. So you can see that the majority of that bank is pretty much the juniper. So there are plenty of opportunities, I, I would say, to leave strategically uh, portions of that. Um, and I guess also, you know, I think one of the, uh, key components of the coastal bank is, you know, part of it, at least, is the capability of, of having wildlife habitat and coverage, as well as, um, you know, food foraging areas. Um, and I think you can really see from this image that the juniper, it's pretty much a monoculture covering this bank. It's really not providing a lot of those resources. And when we swap something like that out for 100% native plant mix um, that's going to give it a lot more of those functions that that I just mentioned. So, so, I, so I, I'm go ahead, Tom. You reassured me to some extent by saying that that you can turn this around in seven days and and so in terms of the optics for the public that's a, that's a real plus as far as I'm concerned if this dragged on for weeks and and uh, uh, it, 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 I'd be uncomfortable with that. But if, if you really can um, transform it in a relatively short amount of time, I think that that helps an awful lot. Uh, so yeah. like, you, you said you're a small firm. It sounds like it'd be all hands on deck here. Uh, and, it, and it probably wouldn't be a good idea to spread them out over the entire bank. You, I, I would think that do the North Park all together, get that over with, and then move everybody to this and get it that done right. as, as quickly as possible. When, one of the other things that has occurred to me is that you're you're you've got these really um, probably deep roots. Because junipers probably have roots that go down to the water table, honestly, and they are really a lattice that is holding that bank together. And when you substitute in uh, annuals, they're even um, Forbes perennial, I guess, um, they're not going to do that. So Jay's uh, suggestion that more shrubs is probably a good one. Maybe there need to be more than five or six. Right now it's being held together by a deep, uh, the very deep roots of these plants. And, and uh, Mr. McCarthy, I'm sure you can appreciate this. You're an arborist. You know that the, that the root system for uh, what you're proposing is considerably shallower than what exists there. Correct. And um, actually, so if, this, if this were to start eroding uh, next year, then you're back in there. The optics get bad again. Uh, this should be a this would be a one shot deal. And I, I don't think you should take any risks that that you're going to uh, start to have an erosion problem because you selected plant a plant list that that's not going to rapidly um, provide the same degree of structural integrity that exists now with those those deep rooted junipers. Not only that, I mean, the the, the impact of rain on those things is it it doesn't even hit the ground there uh, with much velocity. It's dripping off those things when it rains. So there's really another issue there. You've sort of got an umbrella over this thing. Um, that's that's protecting it from any sort of erosion. So, okay. So that, those are really my concerns, and and I th I think you could probably address those. I mean, I'm not saying that this is a dead in the water. 
I just I just wonder how you might go about changing your plant list perhaps to be able to assure us that there's going to be more at, at least the same amount of slope stability as you have now. Yeah, I think certainly the addition of the shrubs is is something that would help that. Um, and uh, that, that's actually something that we suggested as, as a team after the site visit and kind of, you know, talking with you folks. And uh, I agree, yeah, we could, we could potentially add more shrubs um, if, if we felt like that would help stabilize the slope more. Um, and, you know, is there a potential for erosion? Of course, um, I, you know, at, the only thing we have going for us here is that the slope is obviously not nearly as steep as, as the far end where we are actively seeing that erosion. Right. Um, I feel a little bit better about this slope. Um, obviously the most sensitive time is going to be right after the planting, the new planting occurs. So we would probably be carefully monitoring that. Um, and if we needed to you know, put up some sort of erosion control measures after we've seen uh, the way that the water flows on the new uh, landscape, we could certainly look at doing that as well to kind of slow down the velocity until the plants get established for that spring or, or whatever season that it may be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree. I yeah, we certainly are, don't want this very good point. In mm -hmm. fall is when we start to see our, our greatest uh, incidents of nor'easters and right. Heavy, round, heavy rainfall, and if uh, you're unlucky, uh, all of your hard work could get washed into Little yep. Harbor, and that would not be good. Yep, I, I would not Brent, want that. A, I, I know we've we've been at this for uh, two hearings now, and everybody wants to, to move it along. Uh, however, it, it sounds like there is going to be a revision to the existing plan, as you mentioned. There was a uh, discussion about adding the, the wooded shrubs as a result of the uh, last site plan. You're hearing some comments tonight about trying to uh, keep some of the junipers down the bottom there. Uh, I don't know that we would we would move this project forward tonight based on a revision of a plan. I personally would like to see a revised plan, but it I could support with the comments that were made tonight with the addition of uh, five to seven woody shrubs and maintaining some of the juniper uh, at the bottom uh, of the, the toe of the slope there. You know, I, I would be supportive of the project, but that's just me. Uh, I don't know how other commissioners feel. Is this, is the, the changes that are being made here or other with other commissioners uh, supportive of the changes or where, where do you stand? I, I'm, good. I'm good with the Northern slope. I mean, what's going to be done there, and I'm just fine with with the uh, walkway and patio, and I could see that that I, I just don't have a problem with that. They they look fine to me, but um, this area that we're looking at here, I'm less confident that that um, it's risk free. I mean, nothing's risk free, of course, but hmm. but um, I just I just, and I think five or six I I think five or six shrubs is not really going to make much difference. And uh, and if you and if you do want to remove the junipers, I don't have a problem with that either. I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell you what to plant here. Uh, I just, I just, I just want to feel that 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 slope is stable. That uh, it's not going to take very long to do this, so the neighbors don't start getting the wrong idea here. And uh, so those are my two main main concerns, really. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Will, any comments? Yeah, I would just say that. Similar to the the other commissioners that have spoken, my concern is uh, maintaining, preventing erosion on that bank. So anything you can do to alter the plan, whether it's more shrubs, keep the junipers, anything that keeps that erosion controlled, is I would be more supportive of. Okay. I I just had a question, and and maybe because it really wasn't focused on too much in the first hearing in terms of the hardscape. Um, it I mean it looks like you decrease the impervious area in the 50, but increased in the 100. Is, can you just help me understand where that increase is coming from? I'm assuming it's widening of the, the path and the material that you've chosen. Sure, so the reduction is um, here in the rear where there's an existing patio area right. and that's mine here. Yep. 
see the uh, new patio is reduced here. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where the major reduction uh, is. And right. we are adding a new walkway over here in, in the rear, um, going up to the uh, rear entry. And that's that's primarily where the increase in the 100 foot buffer is. Okay. We did, we did try to break that down in calculations up here so that we were showing where the increase and decrease is for. I, I can add to that as well. I believe we increased the width of the walkway um, yeah. to accommodate um, accessibility issues. That was what I was trying to understand because that that I'm definitely in, in favor of and have no issue with, but I wanted to understand why the increase, but that makes sense. Uh, Perhaps the way to move forward here is, is just to... Uh, um, so you can get underway is to condition this so that you have a planting plan that um, meets um, with the agent's approval and maybe uh, one other of our members like Eric. Well, the, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I will not be reviewing that after tonight. <laughs> However, we're... we're putting uh, a lot of weight on on the next uh, commissioner to review a plan and uh, I don't know when I, I would like to move this forward uh, I think that there are some changes to the plan as a result of the comments that are made tonight that are a little bit more than than minor and the question is whether or not the homeowner is willing to to make those changes that have been made uh, to address the comments that have been made tonight. Otherwise, the uh, any potential approval would be null and void. And, and that's where I was trying to get at an exact number mm -hmm. of the wooded shrubs and an exact number or square footage of the junipers that are going to stay. That's all. And so mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't, that might be a little stretch condition as opposed to and I know nobody wants to drag this out anymore a quick revised sketch plan get this first on the agenda at the next meeting and take it to vote Mr. Vice Chair yeah sorry didn't mean to interrupt you go ahead um, Ms. Murphy okay I'm Kathleen Murphy I'm um, my husband Mike and I own the property and really appreciate um the attention and the conversation, not only the site visit, but the last uh, hearing and this hearing. We would be anxious to move this forward this evening if it means, uh, you know, we'd have to think about where this pathway would go down, but if it means keeping the junipers, uh, we can discuss where this path uh, could come down in a different area. The problem with the photograph that you just saw, it does not show that literally half of that hillside has nothing on it. So, you know, if the concern is the, the woody plants and we're saying five to seven and you want us to put in 10, tell us what you want and we'll do it. Um, we would just, you know, you've spent a lot of time deliberating. Uh, I'm concerned about the change, um, perhaps with perspectives that haven't been here already. And so if it means retaining those junipers and then uh, allowing us to uh, fill that hillside, you know, work on that hillside that is currently exposed uh, we'd be, you know, more than happy to do that so that we can advance this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, there was, uh, so the number as far as the wooded shrubs that were proposed were, uh, the number I have down here is five to seven wooded shrubs. However, given that, uh, we, we, as you mentioned, we talked about the juniper trees, um, the juniper shrubs, etc. Personally, I don't, you know, re, I, I don't think you need to keep every inch of all of the junipers. I think if you wanted to remove some of the junipers and replace them, that's that's the problem that, that we f deal with now. It's a question of what percentage of square area of the junipers are existing there now. Is it a 12 by 20 foot area? And the commission says of the 240 square feet, you must maintain, you know, 50% of the junipers that are there now, or is it 40% or is it 60%? So that's a number that, you know, we would have to discuss. 
the, the walkway coming down, I don't personally really have a problem with the walkway. I don't know, you know, where else you're going to put that other than putting it off of the edge of the driveway. But I understand that you want to have a walkway coming down there and I'm totally sympathetic to accessibility, uh, et cetera. So I personally really didn't have much of a problem with the walkway. My, my, my issue was the junipers at the toe of the slope. And, but, you know, we, we have four members here, as I mentioned earlier, there need to be three members, at least three votes in favor of any special condition or any, any motion that's being made this evening. So uh, it sounds like, you know, Tommy, you need three of us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, what, I'd, I'd be willing to, I'd be the, the willing to, to approve this if, if, um, Again, if that planting plan that uh, Mr. McCarthy is going to make pretty quickly, uh, uh, I mean, Charlotte ha must have a pretty good idea of where we're going with this, right? Uh, so I, tr I trust her to um, make the, the final determination of whether Mr. McCarthy's planting plan is going to address um, the issues that, that I've raised. So I, I, so I, it, so Tom, I would, have, I would uh, approve this now just with that condition that, that uh, Mr. McCarthy revised his plan. He puts more um, woody stuff in there and I don't care whether there's a single juniper left as long as, as, long as uh, the, uh, the, the function that those junipers serve is preserved. That, that, yeah, I, I don't want to tell anybody. You're, what kind of you're, 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 so you're worried about the stability of the bank? Yeah, and and I think I think that, that, that I think that the bank looks really stable now. I know it's stable. Those junipers are are like uh, it's like being in jail. I mean, down underneath the ground there because it's it's probably dense with juniper roots. And and I'm concerned that once all of those get pulled out, that it it could very well fail. Probably not in the long run if it, with a little bit of luck, but but under some circumstances like uh, maybe two nor'easters in a row this winter. It could it could all go east, yep. we'll say, into into Little Harbor. Okay. And so, uh, obviously, with the you know good siltation uh, fences, uh, barriers. I mean that that could uh, maybe alleviate that. But you don't want it to fail right. the first season. Right. And, and so gotcha. that that's my concern. Like I say, I I would vote okay. to approve this, and Charlotte, and maybe even Eric weigh in on this uh, when when okay. Mr. McCarthy's got a new plan. I have a right. suggestion that that might help based off of some conditions we've already issued for other projects. Um, it sounds like we definitely want to see, um, you know, the majority of the junipers preserved, maybe to the maximum extent practicable. Um, so one of the one condition that we could potentially implement is, uh, you know, a revised plan be submitted within a certain time frame, and it has to be acceptable to the agent and the chair and or another commissioner uh, prior to the work uh, commencing. And so, you know, if we wanted to add any language about how much of the junipers we want to preserve, I'm definitely, um, you know, in favor of, you know, the majority uh, as best as possible. Um, and then we don't have to zero in on a percentage and it can try to just be that maintaining the majority um, if, if the commissioners are willing to entertain that. I'm, I'm writing some notes down here. The, uh, again, if, if I were uh, the chair or, or reviewing this in two weeks from now, which I will not be either or, I would feel more comfortable that I don't want to put any responsibility on an individual that's actually not here present at the hearing tonight that would otherwise potentially have a, a different opinion that we have this evening. So that individual has to be one of the four people. But what I'm hearing is that, um, well, let me, Will, would you be supportive of moving that forward with the special conditions about maintaining existing stability of the bank? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, Trish, any further comment on that? Nothing further, and okay. I, I, I feel your pain because I won't be here the next time around either, so <laughs> it's tricky. All right, I, I, have, uh, I have a list of about six or seven conditions here that I'm going to make uh, first uh, in, in Charlotte, if I've left any of them out, this is, a, I don't know about unique, but uh, we could have easily continued this hearing and had a totally revised plan. But for the sake of, of moving it forward, 
uh, this evening, Jay Pimpire will make a motion to issue a uh, order of conditions for the project at 20 Nichols Road with the following uh, special conditions. That the work on the, uh, on the uh, I call it the northwest side, uh, the re-stabilization re re uh, stabilization of the bank all be done by hand. This is the grassy area that's going to be uh, northeast. Uh, removed. What is it? Okay. Northeast. Northeast. The northeast area of the property be uh, all done by hand and rake uh, for the entire property. Uh, the second condition is that no soil uh, being is being brought in. If soil is being brought in, it will be specially approved by the conservation agent, but it's not expected that any soil is going to be brought into the site that uh, any uh, heavy machine, there will be no heavy machinery in the 50 foot of buffer zone. There may be some machinery that's uh, being, there will be some machinery that's being used for the retaining wall, et cetera. And if there is any removal of any junipers, um, that, that be uh, the machinery not encroach upon the 50 foot buffer zone. Uh, it's not a special condition, but it's understood that no trees are being removed. And then last, but certainly not at least the big one here is that, and I'm gonna extend this out. Uh, what is two weeks? I'm gonna put by July, I'm gonna say actually by July 13th, two weeks from today, yesterday, given the 4th of July and the fact that our chair is on vacation, a revised plan be submitted to the Conservation Commission that addresses um, that adds between five to seven woody shrubs to the current plan and that first and or second but foremost that a the planting plan that is this their redesign of the planting plan uh will be designed in order that it maintains the existing stability of the bank and that is acceptable to both the uh conservation commission agent and Mr. Uh, Tom Bell, and I say Tom Bell because he is one of the four members that are voting in favor of, the, maybe voting in favor of the project tonight. And that I don't wanna put any responsibility on the chair or anyone that's actually not in attendance this evening that may have a difference of opinion uh, of the conditions that we set on tonight. So I wanna uh, place an, uh, a commissioner responsible for the uh, approval of that plan. Is, is that acceptable to all? Did we also want to tighten the erosion barrier on the grassy bank at all as part of the revised plan? I know that was one yeah, of the comments that we had. Yes, please. As part of the revised planting plan, could you tighten up that erosion barrier so it's closer to the toe of the slope? Any other conditions you want to add to that the motion, Charlotte? Uh, any other conditions? If, if I, any further commissioners? Did we want to have like a seasonal planting, um, you know, because uh, Brendan uh, said that this would be done probably mid to late October. Did we want to uh, implement that as a condition or just rely on his I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave that to uh, the best management practices, assuming that you want to main, you, that you're not going to, you don't want to have a failed project. You want to do this once and once only. So mm -hmm. everyone's a professional here that like to think it's obviously going to be done in a, in, in, a, in a proper planting season. Okay. Yeah. And then my only okay. other note was uh, the heavy machinery, some, some would be needed to remove the existing retaining wall. So just noting that. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, you have a motion with special conditions. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Second by Tom Bell. All those in favor of a motion with the conditions I mentioned, please say aye. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpare, aye. Right. So uh, Brendan and and, uh, and Deb and, and the homeowner or whoever is going to be responsible for this, I would uh, obviously encourage you to work closely with Charlotte uh, in, within the next uh, week and a half here by July 13th uh, that the planting plan be submitted that that addresses the concerns. And I think you you understand, you know, what we'd be looking for here. Absolutely. We'll take care of that. And uh, and Mr. Chair, do we do we also need a variance? Yeah, I was getting towards that next. Oh, Thank okay. you, Will. Yeah. 
So we'll also, uh, Jay Pimpara, make a motion to issue a variance for work within the 50 foot buffer at 20 Nichols Road. Second. Second by Mr. Ashton. All those in favor, please say aye. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpari, aye. That vote passes 4-0. Thank you. Again, I encourage you to, to uh, work closely with Charlotte uh, sometime next week or the week after. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate your time. And commissioners. Thank you. Appreciate Have a good fourth. It. Thank you. You too. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Yeah. Trying to move between about four different screens here. Yeah. I have, so next hearing is a notice of intent 21 dash, excuse me, 22 dash 21 stormwater permit 22 dash 17, 31 Dole Lane is a single family dwelling. It says on the agenda that it's continued from June 16th, but I do have the notice of public record. Charlotte, am I, just, am I reading this into the record? Yes, uh, we had to continue the first time just because they needed to okay. make some updates first. Okay, no problem. So uh, I will read into the record the notice of public hearing in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Cohasset Wetlands Bylaw and the Cohasset Stormwater Bylaw. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 16th at uh, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. via re remote participation on Zoom platform for notice of intent 22-21 and stormwater permit 22-17 from Dolan Lane Realty Trust construct a new single family dwelling at 31 Dolan Lane. Uh, who do we have? Oh, Mr. Hassett is back. I am back. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, with me is Brad Holmes with Environmental Consulting and Restoration. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the property owner and the applicant for an NOI and stormwater permit for a driveway crossing. And I will bring up that plan. So this property is currently undeveloped. It's um, approximately 4.3 acres in size. It has frontage on Dolan Lane and the um, applicant has an agreement with the abutter for an access easement shown over the southern, southerly portion of their property. The high point on the property is in the back, back right corner and the property slopes either to an isolated vegetative wetland or primarily to a bordering, vege vege bordering vegetative wetland to the south. Both of the wetlands were flagged by Brad Holmes of Environmental Consulting and Restoration. Um, we have designed the project in order to minimize the impact on the wetland resource area. There is a small portion of wetland fill um, that is required in, or in order to access the rear portion, the upland portion of the property where the single family home will, and the septic system will be developed. That area of wetland fill is approximately 970 square, uh, square feet and it will be replicated at a ratio of two to one. Um, we've provided a planting, pl a planting narrative as well as a planting plan prepared by Brad. And he's specifying a, in the areas of replication, a seed mix as well as, uh, let's see, 14 trees and 54 bushes. Um, going back to the site plan, it isn't feasible to um, eliminate, to access the back portion of the property without impacting the wetland. And I'll, and I'll show you why. Um, if we move the driveway any further north, there is a large vertical face of ledge that would have to be, um, that would have to be disturbed. And it's really, it's too big. It's really not feasible. Um, similarly to the rear, due to the, due to the slopes and the topography and the ledge, you would have to disturb more wetland back here to get to the upland portion of the property. So we feel that we've just designed it and located the drive, driveway to minim, minimize that disturbance. For stormwater, all of the roof runoff will go to a roof drywell and all the roof, all the runoff from the front lawn um, as well as the majority of the driveway will go to a rain garden uh, shown here. We also have a stone trench running down a portion of the driveway. 
Um, again, the uh, rates and volumes of runoff are all reduced. And we feel this project is permittable um, because we are just proposing the alteration of 970 square feet of wetland and your bylaw allows the alteration of up to 1,000 square feet, uh, noting that DEP allows up to 5,000 square feet. So your bylaw is uh, much more strict. Uh, we're also mitigating at a ratio of two to one. Again, your bylaw does require two to one, but the DEP only requires one to one. Uh, there will be a mulch sock installed down gradient of any work. And again, the house is entirely outside of the 100 foot wetland buffer. Uh, thank you. With that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, and I'd be glad, glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, before before I uh, travel, I want to turn it over to you for, in a moment. Jeff, what other boards uh, need approval of this project? Are any, any other boards that you're in front of or would need approval for? Yeah, we're meeting with the Board of Health next week, um, July 7th. Uh, any, any new construction septic system goes before them. And that's the only other board. Um, it will not trigger a large home review. Okay. And then could you, uh, uh, well, I guess I'll, let me turn it over to Charlotte before I ask some questions. Charlotte, if you, uh, see, can you give us a little overview here or the uh, issues that you have uh, encountered or comments? Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, you know, but looking at this project, you know, it's, um, I don't think we've seen something like this before. So I did do some uh, research on the um, required regulations for limited projects. Um, and I'll just reference the commission to, I'm not gonna read it, but I'll just reference it. Um, it's 310 CMR 10.53-3, um, which has the requirements. And then it also points to wetlands policy 88-2 about access roadways. Um, so this can be found on mass.gov's website. And basically the summary for you know, meeting these requirements is um, in order to, uh, for issuing authorities to grant approval um, for these types of limited projects for roadway access, um, you know, there has to be kind of a clear indication um, through an alternatives analysis and possibly and or habitat analysis if the commission were to grant that um, to show that there really is no other option. Um, so the, the main goal would be to try and avoid the wetlands alterations if at all possible, if that can't be, avoided, the next step is to mitigate and replicate. And um, as uh, the uh, Mass DEP recommends one-to-one, -one, our bylaws are stricter and rec um, they require two-to-one replication, which they've done on this plant here. Um, so I did have a lot of questions um, for Jeff about, you know, kind of looking at these other alternatives that he kind of um, just summarized here. Um, I did walk the site and this was a very, very, uh, uh, busy site with lots of wood, shrubs, overgrown, everything. So I did walk around it to get an idea of, from the site. There is definitely a lot of ledge. Um, so the, it is a complicated site to work with. Um, if you go up uh, north of the IBW, there are um, lots of ledge outcrops. I did walk in between the property line and the IBW on, uh, you know, um, it's kind of right in the middle of the screen here. Um, so there's definitely ledge outcrops that are um, in between this area. Um, so it would be tricky to kind of move a driveway there. Um, I did also clarify with legal counsel that easements, um, you know, of course, since this isn't finalized, I believe, and Jeff, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the easement line, it is possible to, you know, be modified um, if the owner were to um, be open to that. So that is something that can be explored um, as a possible alternative to try and mitigate the alteration even further. Um, and then, uh, you know, just noting the delineations and um, I think Brad can clarify this, uh, the delineations on the site plan were from 2018, but I believe uh, Brad did go out again in 2020 um, to, uh, Brad, I don't know if you updated any of the flags or if just resurveyed, but I think that'd be good for the commission to know since our rules and regulations, obviously we, we wanna see surveys done within the last um, two years, um, even though delineations are good for three years. Um, so those are just some of the, um, you know, notes that I had. And then just a little bit more on our rules and regulations and bylaws. I'll just point the commission to um, section 32 for replication requirements. So our bylaw, I'm sorry, our rules and regulations, excuse me, have, um, uh, you know, a lot of criteria for what needs to be met for replication. Um, so that's just a really helpful guidance as well as um, section 28, which is about any potential habitat analysis, because if you look at the northern abutting parcels, 
you are going to see Wheelwright Park and Barnes Wildlife Sanctuary. So those are just some things to think about, and that's kind of like the general overview when you're dealing with limited projects. And Jeff, please let me know if I've left anything out because <laughs> I was looking at these, and it's definitely uh, complicated. So. No, I think that was a good summary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't add anything further. Jeff, can you uh, just give us a, well, I guess let me just go back and, and ask uh, Brad about the wetland delineation, et cetera. And can you just give us a quick little overview of that, Brad? I know you, you waited patiently all, all night here. Uh, and just to tell us like the timing of that, when the delineation was done and just a quick little overview of what we're dealing with here. Sure. Um, there's a bordering vegetative wetland system along the south side. Uh, that wetland I originally delineated in 2018, and I had been back, at least in the area where the wetland crossing is, over the last few years, um, especially we had a project on the other side of the street. So I, I know I had looked at that area. I can't, I know I had reflagged that edge because we were within 100 feet of the project to the east. Um, the isolated vegetated wetland to the north of the site, I don't believe I've been back there since I originally delineated it in 2018. So certainly uh, go out there and refresh flags if I need to. Um, I, don't, I don't believe that it's changed in the sense that it's pretty well confined with topography, but um, that's not a problem for me to go out and verify and, and reflag as necessary. But, but so, as far as but in that in that in that area that you were just uh, alluding to, I know you moved uh, someone moved the screen up. There is no work in the buffer zone of that particular uh, resource area or wetland. Correct? That's correct. You're correct. Okay. And if you could just uh, again go over the fifty outline of uh, Jeff Hassett, if you're controlling here, just give us. The actual edge of the wetland delineation there in blue and then the 50 and the 100 and the red and the green sure um, the southerly wetland is a bvw uh, the wetland line is shown in blue uh, the 50 foot buffer is in red and the 100 foot buffer is in green um, the isolated wetland to the north has a 25 foot buffer it's shown in green okay as far as uh, the, the project, uh, the project across the street, is that the existing ongoing project now? How are these uh, resource areas connected? So we, are that, they, that they, is a good question. There, there were, we flagged an IVW on the other side of Dolan Lane. And right. through in, during the permitting process, we discovered a four inch pipe that was covered up cro crossing the road. Yeah. Um, but that does, make a connection when that wetland is, is flooded rather deep. So it, so c considering that the wetland across the street was classified as an IBW, this are we saying is a BBW, but where is the connection on this property to a, a, a another wetland area? Is it a BVW or is it an the, IVW? This is an extensive BVW that extends very far to the Southwest. Um, okay. I can probably bring up an aerial and show that to you. And our work is on the most north Northeasterly end of that BVW. Okay, yeah. No, I just, I didn't, uh, there's a connection, but not a true connection to the IVW. Obviously it's isolated across the street. Correct. Okay. Correct. The majority of that wetlands on the, a budding pro property, but it creeps in, and as you can see, the right. large wetland. Okay. Uh, commissioners, uh, any comments here? I, I think it's uh, safe to say here you have, you have a lot going on. Uh, I've been on the commission for eight years now. Very r rarely, did, although we have had a few. Uh, where we have a driveway in, in the 50, never mind a a, 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 wet, a proposed wetland crossing. So I think this is certainly going to involve a, a little bit more work. Uh, I think it's, it's safe to say that we'll, we will most likely be continuing this uh, hearing. Uh, that we will we'll not be making a final decision on this tonight. The can you and, and also two of the commissioners there on the commission tonight will no longer be commissioners after this evening. So uh, just for the record there, your next hearing will almost be uh, 
a revisitation of this hearing with probably many more additional, many more questions. Can you talk a little bit more about the, I know our bylaws section 32 allow if the commission agrees, it, it doesn't specifically state on the section 32 that the commission has to grant, the commission may grant the disturbance of up to a thousand uh, square feet and you have 970 square feet here. Can you talk a little bit about the alteration versus the uh, mitigation? Sure, so the reason we didn't come in any less than 970 is that the further we go nor north, the more ledge we have to remove. So right now we're cutting into just the corner of the ledge. And, um, you know, I think that's reasonable. If we, if we go further north, we're going to be doing some blasting to remove that at the end of that ledge outcrop. So, so I think the, uh, I think you're I, I don't proposing to, yeah, sorry. yeah. You're proposing to disturb 970 uh, square feet. What is, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the mitigation efforts to replace that at the at least two to one or what you're proposing? Sure. Um, yeah, I noted that there are four, 14 trees, 54 bushes and a, a seed mix, but Brad, you want to elaborate on that for us? Sure. So what we need to do is we need to take the upland area adjacent to the wetland in two sections and bring that down just below the elevation of the adjacent wetland, backfill it with organic, high organic soils and recreate a wetland system. So we have to not only plant it out as wetland, but we have to create the um, hydrologic connections and, and bring in new soil to create that. So we're going to do that in a two to one ratio in, in the areas designated to make up that that difference. Um, that would be something that would be a technical, we put together a wetland replication plan with a narrative with a step-by-step -step process. And you need a professional uh, hand in hand with the, the excavation and landscape contracting crew to, to carry that out. We've done it a number of times and it's been successful as long as you have a, a professional and follow the, the step. But it would be something that would be um, overviewed and it would be monitored for the life of the order conditions or, or beyond um, so that uh, it's uh, ensured success. So that's been submitted and documented and that's the overview. When you say that the proposed wetland alteration is 970 square feet, uh, is the, the bottom black dotted line there, is that the siltation barrier, kind of the, the line in the sand per se? Because that's as, exactly correct. So that, as, that line, as you know, when you start to do excavation of a 12 foot driveway, you, you probably need to go at least four, if not six or even eight feet off the edge of the actual driveway. You're not going to, you're not going to bring in an excavator that's going to, just make that simple cut. You're gonna to have to go way beyond the edge of the driveway. So, so because this portion um, is the very northernmost um, end of the wetland, it's not incredibly wet, and um, so it's not it's not like other wetland crossings that we've permitted where the driveway is you know elevated four feet or so, and you have culverts underneath it. Um, in this case, we're designing it so there'll be sheet flow across the driveway. And for that reason, we're able to more closely match the existing grade. Um, the grade might be coming up about a foot. So we don't, in, for that reason, we don't need as much as um, six feet. This might be closer to four feet. I don't have the exact number here, but that's the intent to be able to create a very narrow passage through the wetland and really minimize the amount of work um, mm -hmm. in the wetland. That erosion barrier would be the location would be staked out by our survey crew before and there's any equipment on the property. And then the 12 inch mulch, mulch sock um, installed. In this case, I'd recommend that before even tree clearing to really define that limit of work. And how many trees are proposed to be removed in the 50 foot buffer again? Um, I, I do not have that number. I can certainly get it for you. Yeah, that, that would be helpful. Thank you. 
And so as far as the easement goes, is there a signed easement in place now between the two property owners? So the both property owners have signed the application um, as the owners on this notice of intent. Uh, the, that agreement will not be formalized until, you know, permits are in place, uh, probably just before building permit application. Will that go on record at the Registry of Deeds? So can you, you talk just a little bit more? I know there's a ledge outcrop there, but it's tough to see from this plan here on why the easement or, or the driveway couldn't be placed further. Uh, I'll just call it north. I don't know where north is here on the plan. Yeah, no, north but, is the top of the page. Okay, so further north to just get away from this whole wetland issue. I know there's ledge, but but it looks like the contours are actually a little bit better the further north you go. It, it's a sheer vertical cliff. Um, I think this would be. I was going to suggest. I don't. I don't think we could close to this regardless uh, because the DEP has an issue to file file number on it yet. Um, but we would be glad to do a site visit if you think that that would be helpful and stake out yeah. the driveway. I definitely but that's, think that's the reason. It's hard to see it on paper, but yeah. when you're standing on Dolan Lane looking at that vertical face, it'd be daunting and a lot of disturbance to, to go through it. Well, you'd be out of the 50 and you'd be completely away from the wetland. So there would be some benefits to that. I, I, uh, but I, I but again, I, I haven't been out there uh, to see this exact uh, Area, so I, I would strongly support a, a site visit by the commission. Uh, other commissioners, comments? I don't see a good way into this place. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking at a shaded relief map with contours, and um, I don't know whether they picked the best way in or not. I mean, the the uh, the the property has uh, more than an easement and actually the property extends to Dolan Lane on the north. And if the driveway were uh, put in there, they would probably have to cross through a wetland there. How, uh, it, it is an isolated vegetative wetland and I, I don't know whether we can make a value judgment about which is, which is uh, better to desecrate, but uh, both both plans, both potential uh, access points don't look very good. And if I understood what Charlotte said about the limited project, one of them has to be selected here. Is that right, Charlotte? That that the uh, that the landowner uh, is going to get a driveway in here one way or another. Yes, yes, and no. So, like uh, limited projects usually refer to when wetlands alteration would be granted, it would mean that there are no other options to access an upland area. Um, and usually that's done through, um, you know, alternatives analysis and or habitat analysis, depending on what the issuing authority would want. So, you know, again, it needs to be clear that there's no upland access um, either from the parcel itself and or abutting parcels. But yeah, we need to basically see that there's no option to access the upland area and that um, this, this option to go through the wetland is the only possible means. It's not inconceivable that that northern um, kind of panhandle there that we see on our screen just to the left of the north arrow, uh, it, it, it is conceivable that a driveway could be cut through the 25 foot buffer and avoid that isolated vegetated wetland. Avoid the BBW. No, that's an IBW up there. Oh, right, right, right. The bottom part is a BBW. I think what you're trying to say because is you the, still the, have to- The wetland to the south is, a, is an extensive BBW. Correct. It's the one on the top, that you'd still have disturbance of the IBW on the top. Uh, no, not necessarily. You got 25 feet there. You've got a setback from the property line, which is, is it five well, feet? You need a, it's still five feet for driveways. Okay, so that means they've got about 20 feet. They, 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 they've got about 20 feet of buffer that they could go through without actually getting into the wetland. We, um, we, we have looked in, at in that. Either, in either case, uh, there's gonna be a lot of um, bedrock excavation here by the looks of things. I mean, even this, even this uh, 
southerly route is got two prominent um, outcrops here that are just right. They are steep, 10, 12 feet high. Jeff, so Jeff that's, Tom, I think Jeff was going to address that. Uh, Jeff, could you address that uh, to Tom's point about this uh, alternatives on the site here and what you've considered? Yeah, we did consider accessing over the frontage, um, the property's frontage to the north. You know, that's the obvious location, but it was determined that that would be quite a bit more wetland alteration um, just to, you know, because of the topography and the ledge to actually get a driveway through there and grade it out, um, which is why the applicant then looked into explore, then explored getting an easement from the neighbor, which she is willing to grant an easement over the southerly portion of her property which in our opinion is, is less impact to, to the wet, wetland resource areas. Can you zoom into that area you're talking about, please? No, the north, the north, the the north. Central northern, yeah. north uh, access point. And zoom right on in there. Oops, where'd it go? So uh, with the exception of where your cursor is right now, you've, I don't know whether those are one foot contours or not. Um, that's the only steep part, the only cliff-like part there. But if you, as you reach that point where your cursor is and turn south, uh, the contours are spaced much, much, much wider. The, the, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit it's a less of a, considerably less of a slope in the area right there at point D1, or is that DH? I'm gonna put my glasses on to tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, so. at, right, at, right at that uh, DH. I mean, that is not um, all that onerous compared to, compared to just you know 50 feet uh, back up to the Northeast. I mean, uh, those contour lines are fairly close together. Those are, uh, the two foot contours, okay. So um, that seems to be in terms of of excavation, that seems to be a tough spot. But once you get past that, uh, and, and in fact, this may be less uh, difficult than the um, uh, excavation you propose for the, for the southern entry. You wanna scroll down to that, same, same magnification. Let's look at the contour lines there and not the proposed ones. We're looking at the, uh, at the natural ones. Uh, there is a also about a uh, 10 foot uh, vertical change there between uh, 56 feet and 62 feet, 64 feet, 62, maybe 63 feet. That uh, is probably about the same size. So I, I, it looks like uh, I, I don't really see any difference between the amount of excavation. I mean that you'd have to you'd have to really lay that out and, and do volumetric calculation, but. It doesn't look that different to me, and that doesn't. That you can avoid the wetland in the north. You can't avoid it in the south. Yeah, it's gonna. It might cost more money, but that's not our issue. Yeah, the difference would be you would just be hammering the the end of the ledge, whereas up top you would have to excavate right down through it. Well, um, and just, then once you get back well, beyond the property I, line, you're, you you can't. Do you just see take that? It. You see I, that place right there at the edge? You just passed it up. Go back down there to the south. The part I'm looking at specifically is just head along your road a little bit. Right there. Up, oh, back up. See how close those contours are to your, uh, just to your left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where it starts to get tough again. And also on the back side of it. So I, I don't know, you could probably uh, prove to me one way or the other by doing a volumetric calculation of how much you're going to excavate at that ledge. But from what I can see on my shaded map here with contour, same contour interval, uh, that it looks just as feasible to come in from the north as it does from the south. And again, it looks like you could avoid going through even the isolated vegetative wetland. You can make it through that 25 foot buffer, it's threading a needle, but you could probably do it. You get 20 feet to do it. So uh, I appreciate that, Tom. Uh, and I, I think we that you, you made some very uh, valid points here or uh, comments, suggestions, recommendations. That's really all, all we can do. We can't tell the applicant how to design the project, but right. you've made some good points. I think that uh, uh, 
certainly we'll entertain more comments here. And if there's anybody from the audience who has a question or, or a comment, please do so in the Q and A. That uh, you know, this this is a very difficult site, and there's we have not seen one of these wetland uh, crossings. And I know the eight years I've been on this commission. Uh, as Charlotte mentioned, there is certainly language that we all have to review a little bit more about crossings and alternatives, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that the points that Tom made are, are, are very valid, and I would, I would just encourage the the applicant to uh, and the engineer to reevaluate that and see whether or not those are actually feasible options. I don't expect you to fully answer that tonight. You're well, welcome to do so. But I think at, at the next hearing, safe to say that this will be continued, that those will, you should probably have a justifiable response to uh, the alternative, why other alternatives are, are not an alternative here for this particular project. And, you know, personally, I can't say much for the application, but you wouldn't need an easement if, in fact, there were other areas or whether or not that easement could be pushed further north. I think certainly a site visit by, by the commission would be very beneficial as well. Our, our next hearing is July uh, 14th. And next week's probably a very difficult, maybe a very difficult week. I know that, uh, at least two of the commissioners that are currently not here tonight, I don't even think they're going to be back from vacation until sometime next week. So uh, scheduling a site visit is probably a good thing, but I don't have an exact date on that right now. But I think it's probably one of the one of the next steps, certainly uh, in moving this forward. Uh, any further comments by the commission? Uh, Jeff, what uh, again? I you know I laid out some things there as something that we would be looking for as far as addressing the comments that that Shala has made, alternatives, etc. Uh, further justification and then setting up a, a site visit. What is your schedule for the next couple of weeks? I can't set a date right now because again, the yeah, commission we, is going to look we, different we two weeks do, from now. And we need to make out too before we do a site visit um, and ultimately some drafting and designing. So I think two weeks is not reasonable. If maybe we can push it out four weeks, I don't know what your schedule is with the holidays yeah. coming up and everything. So our, it sounds like if our next if our next hearing is July 14th, the hearing after that would be our for the, the 29th. 28th, 29th. That's what it says on the schedule. Let me just double check. Yeah, yeah. it should be uh, the 28th. If the I don't even know what the calendar is, the 14th, the Thursday. Oh, yeah, that might be a might be a typo because uh, it says on the schedule. July 29th, 2022. So that would be a Friday. <laughs> um, yeah. So our next here, uh, second hearing would be July 28th. July 28th. Yeah. Yeah. So In, um, uh, yeah, I'd like to request a yeah. continuous continuance to the 28th then. Okay. That we should also uh, be sure that that IVW, that Northern IVW is uh, the wetlands delineation is refreshed. It's expired if it was done in 2018. So that should be refreshed. Sure. Jeff, do you want to wait till after the 28th to and show the commission is definitely going to want a site visit, uh, probably try and schedule a site visit after the July 28th based on any potential revisions or updates? Um, I think it would be best to do a, a site visit right before that meeting on the 28th. And hopefully okay. that would give me time to get the information in and then we can look at it in the field. Um, okay. Could, could I coordinate that with Charlotte as we get a little closer? Yeah, no, I, okay. yeah, absolutely. It's that, that's, that's, that's the probably the only way we're going to be able to do this. So, uh, Charlotte will try, if you could try and coordinate a, a site visit for, I guess the, the, maybe even late in the week, the week before, if not like July 24th, Fifth, sixth, that Monday or Tuesday, yeah. somewhere sure, in that the time of, frame, yeah. or the or the Thursday or Friday beforehand. Yeah, we can do the week of the meeting. That sounds good to me. Okay, and it'll be fresh in everyone's mind as well. So we'll we'll do, we'll Jeff will coordinate with you uh, on that. Again, the commission's going to look a little bit different in a couple of weeks. 
Uh, so we'll have to get some uh, coordination going uh, given 4th of July, et cetera. And we'll continue this hearing until July 28th. All right. All right thank you. All right, good enough. Have a good 4th. You too. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Uh, we have one last item of business uh, for public hearing wise on the agenda tonight. That is a show cause hearing for 31 Otis Avenue. And I am gonna turn it, uh, Charlotte, if you could promote anyone who you feel is gonna represent the applicant this evening. And then I would uh, like you to just give us a little bit of an overview as far as why we are uh, why there is a show cause hearing why we have asked the uh, the applicant to be present this evening uh, first and uh, thank you for for hanging in here uh, to the to the henry's and, and to carmen uh, i know so sometimes these uh, this is actually a, a quick night tonight or, or I should say normal, re reasonable, reasonable, certainly not quick, it's a reasonable night, but uh, we still have a, probably a long, unfortunately a long way to go, but thank you for hanging in here uh, with us this evening. So Charlotte, can I just uh, turn it, hi Carmen, if I could just turn it over to you Charlotte and just give us a little bit of an overview on, on why we are here this evening. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you um, for everyone for waiting. Uh, but yes, it's definitely nine o'clock is better than 10 plus, which, you know, I was anticipating. Uh, so I'll just start with uh, saying, you know, the, the purpose of this show cause hearing tonight is to follow up on some uh, questions uh, and concerns that commission had uh, when we were discussing uh, closing out the 2014 NOI 1407 uh, dock permit for 31 Otis Avenue. Um, while discussing uh, whether or not to issue a COC for the dock, some of the commissioners noticed that um, based on some photos and aerial imagery, which I can pull up uh, right now, uh, that the existing lawn appeared to be um, extended uh, further um, up against the uh, stone wall, which delineates the limit of the salt marsh. Um, and so, you know, some of the commissioners, I believe, just would really like to hear some clarification tonight. Um, so let me just go through um, some of the photos for reference. So these, this is one of the photos that I took during the um, COC inspection visit. Um, you can see that there is an existing stone wall that delineates the salt marsh. Um, and as Carmen and the uh, owners have pointed out, this uh, wall actually goes along multiple properties and you can see it on the imagery. So this is the end of the um, existing lawn that um, we noticed. And if you look at some old site plans and some aerial imagery, it does look like that the manicured lawn had been extended because uh, we're dealing with the 50 foot buffer and edge of the salt marsh here um, over time had kind of just been slowly, um, you, know, uh, you know, modified. Um, and so sorry, let me just pull up my near map imagery that I showed the owners as well in uh, the show cause request letter. Um, that's why I couldn't find it. I had a different tab open. Here we go. Okay, so this is, a, I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly from a timeline perspective. So this is 2014. This is as early as the imagery that I have goes back to where you can see that the house has not yet been constructed. Um, and so we're just gonna go through kind of, you know, slowly just showing that over time, um, even though this area does look like it was some sort of type of grassy area, um, you can see that the salt marsh here with an existing row of trees in between is consistent um, throughout the imagery here. So you can see that the house started to begin um, construction around 2015. And also just so that the commission's aware, this, um, this property actually has quite a few uh, permits that I did my best to um, you know, describe in a timeline. Um, so starting in 2008, the permit was originally approved from previous owners to build a new dwelling construction. Um, and the construction from the site plans was not to cross the 50 foot buffer. So over time, there have been a couple um, modifications to the original site plan since 2008. Um, and I'll just go through those briefly. Uh, in 2011, they filed a quick RDA to remove some brush and phragmites in the 100 foot buffer. Um, and so that was in 2011, would have lasted three years. 
And then in 2012, we had um, a revised site plan submitted as an amended order of conditions. And with that also was a new stormwater permit. So there was a revised um, amended order of conditions and a stormwater permit in 2012. Um, the original permit was extended until July 2014. So just going back to 2014 here, it was extended until July. However, there was a state um, tolling provision due to the, I believe, like basically the, <laughs> I think it was the economy collapse back in like, you know, 2008 plus. And so permits were extended for additional years. So that's why the housing construction uh, began somewhat around the 2015-16 time. So it was extended an additional four years from 2014 to 2018. And so there were some few, a few minor revisions to the site plan since then. But just by looking at the site plans, which we can choose to pull up tonight if the commission wants to see them, most of the construction, which has consistently indicated on the plans, um, isn't really supposed to show disturbance in the 50 foot buffers. And so just kind of going through here, you know, that 50 foot buffer, at least on the site plans, is kind of just behind the house here. So you can start to see that there's just a little bit of encroaching just from construction activity. There was a variance that was previously granted for some, you know, movement um, plus or minus five feet uh, for construction purposes. Um, and then as you can see, the dock was being constructed. This is, of course, after it was permitted. So the dock is was probably finished, it seems like around 2017 here. You can start to see that there, you know, the, the lawn area here or the previous grass area here was, you know, a little bit disturbed and it looks like they're building a little fire pit or something here in 2017. And then it just kind of keeps going where it looks like the house is mostly constructed and finished by August 2017 here. You can see that the dock and the existing row of trees are still here. The lawn has been um, brought in. And then from here, we start to see it a little bit better. You know, you can see that the stone wall already existing here is still here. Um, the trees are still here. And then when you just keep going, you can kind of see just a little bit that the lawn does seem to kind of slowly encroach up until the salt marsh. Um, you can see a little bit of the difference more between this time period within the last couple of years um so sorry getting to that all right so that's like the biggest difference that you see so it like looks like it's kind of like the dead ish or like previous like existing grass on the site up to the salt marsh and then here you do see a little bit extension here and i think this is just what the commission had some concerns about and anyone please feel free to jump in if you have any additional questions here so i think we just wanted to clarify Kind of what happened here if um, the owners or carmen have any additional information to add and if the commission has any additional concerns and then following up on the 2014 doc coc it might be helpful to just once we reevaluate this to see if the commission is comfortable with issuing a certificate of compliance for the doc once the questions here have been addressed um, so with that i will turn it over to um, the owners and to Carmen, um, if, if you guys have anything to add, if you'd like to pull up anything on your own, um, any photos that you guys took, I know you've provided several to me, so that's very helpful, I think, for the commission to also see. And then, Carmen, if you have any additional information, I know you have some other aerial imagery from Google Earth and might be able to clarify some things, so I will leave it uh, to you guys now. Okay, excellent. Thank, Thank you, you, Charlotte. Can this thing piece, Charlotte? Yes. Thank you. Can everyone see this area? Yes. Okay, I'm actually working in two computers. This is my computer at work. Could you, could you zoom in a bit, please? Zoom in, of course. Mm -hmm. Sure, make your, make your full, go full screen here if you can. Uh, you know what, I am not quite sure if I, well, I'm sure I can That's do it. That's fine if you just zoom in, Colin, yeah. that's good. Yes, just okay. zoom in. Okay, so I just wanted to um, start by, uh, Talking about the ownership of this lot, um, our clients, uh, Charlie and Kathleen uh, Henry, they bought this property on December 31st, 2013. So they've really owned it since 2014. Uh, these are pictures from 2008 before they bought the property and the, this portion of the lot, uh, this 31 Otis Avenue used to be this house right here, as well as this wooded area. And as uh, Sherilyn mentioned, in 2011, there was an, an RDA for some clearing. Uh, this is in 2010, and you can see that still wooded. And of course, we this is during the summer, so the, the canopy of the trees is very healthy. 
Now in 2013, you can see that there's already been clearing in this area. So now it's lawn and then they cleared some more. So in 2014, there is already lawn that went all the way to the trees here that were the border between the, so it's, uh, this is salt marsh. And then there's Phragmite, which is a BBW. And then there was a row of four trees and then it was lawn. So when the, the Henry's bought this property, they saw the lawn and they just assumed that their lawn was there to stay. So in 2015, they owned the property, but they wanted to get the permit for the dock uh, done. So that's what they were working on and they hadn't started construction on the house yet. So in, 2000, in 2015, sometime, they started construction on the house. And here you can see in 2016, that the house is already there still under construction, but mostly there. Then in 2017, once again, you can see still construction is going on. The dock is already there. And this is now in 2018. And you can see like Charlotte's uh, aerial showed the lawn is there. Of course, it's a, it's a much healthier lawn now that it's being maintained. And there are four trees here in the back. Um, and then there's the Phragmites and the salt marsh. And uh, you can see the same. Well, actually, in 2019, you see the lawn. And then you see that these trees in the back are gone. And they put mulch there. So let me go to this document, this is a document that Kathleen put together um, and it just explains um, everything that they are aware of. Uh, so they bought the, the lot in uh, the, uh, the last day of 2013 and they already, you know, could see the lawn and it was just overgrown. Uh, and then there were four trees, one, two, three, four in their property. And then there was a Phragmites and the salt marsh. These are just different pictures that they took during different seasons showing that the 50 foot buffer zone had already been altered. And when they bought this property, it was, it was a pristine lawn the way it is today, but it was, you know, unkept lawn. Um, then in, on August 10th, 2015, the, the house began, uh, they began construction of the house and you can see the one, two, three, four uh, trees back there. In 2017, the dock was already uh, constructed, the house was finished, and there was a big branch that came off of this tree closest to the pier that fell off. And the Henry's contacted an arborist who came and evaluated this tree, but he, he also evaluated the other trees. And what he found was that uh, this tree was dead the tree that was close to the, the pier also was damaged as well as another th tree. So there were three trees that were damaged. And these are just pictures that show some of the damage of the trees. So those three trees were removed. Uh, they say trees two, three, and four were cut in 2018 as they were hazardous after consulting with a local arborist. We did not know that we needed permission to cut the trees that were dangerous to our kids as they were losing very large limbs every storm that would fall through it. And here, looking from the front of the house, you can only see the one tree that was left back in July of 2019. So if you take a look also at this tree, the, this tree doesn't have as many leaves as the neighboring trees. And what happened was, this is a picture one year later, and you can see that it's not, you know, as healthy as the other trees. It already is dying, it's decaying. And then they had uh, this problem. Uh, during a storm in 2020, one of their trees fell and it fell on the roof of their house. So there was damage to the dwelling and they had the arborist again come and take a look at the tree and all the trees around and the arborist recommended also to cut the tree that was dying in the back. And that is how come the four trees that were in the back were removed by, 2012, uh, by 2020. Um, and then these were just pictures because um, during the last uh, hearing, um, the stone wall, that, that it's not a stone wall, it's a stone, uh, stone border uh, was mentioned. So 
uh, Henry's just wanted to show that uh, that line of stones has, has always been there and it's being a part of several properties. Um, but now if I may, and I'm sorry, let me just get out of my work computer. Um, I'm sorry, I'm stuck in my work computer. So that is the history of the trees. Um, once the trees were removed, those four trees in the rear, what happened was the Henry's kept it as mulch because there was nothing there between the, the lawn and uh, the Phragmites. And then after a while, it was just, you know, they, they had nothing. So they extended the lawn over that mulch. Um, so that is uh, the history of the lawn. And uh, we are um, there, uh, we would like to, apply for a certificate of compliance for the house and get guidance for you because that is something that that they don't have a certificate of compliance for the house and uh, get guidance for you from you and maybe do more research I don't know if we should do more research Charlotte as far as you know the the final approved plan um, with guidance from the commission and then we can accommodate whatever the commission thinks that that should be done for the house project. However, we do have two certificates of compliance that are needed, one which is for the dock and one which, which is for the house. Um, and we would, would like to close the, the certificate of compliance for the dock and maybe request a certificate of compliance for the house. And then the commission can review that and let us know if any changes need to be done. Charlotte, so uh, thank you very much, Carmen, for that uh, for that over uh, explanation. It's, uh, that was my next question. So there are two outstanding COCs here, Charlotte. One is for the house, and one is for the dock. Have, Correct. Have so both COCs been uh, been requested by the applicant? No, not at this time. So I believe um, Charlie and Kathleen, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I think they wanted to move with the dock first because um, that was the simpler project. And so this would be the NOI 1407 that would uh, has already been requested in writing with a COC request in an ASBO. And then the permits that would need to be requested um, in the future would be the NOI 08-28, which is the original NOI for the house that you know had been extended and modified, as well as the um, uh, corresponding stormwater permit, which I believe is stormwater permit 12-22. <laughs> um, so I have okay. those numbers on my brain. <laughs> and the RDA doesn't need to be closed out. So that was just an old thing that was filed from a previous owner. So um, yeah, it would be the uh, the old NOI and the stormwater permit for the house. Mm -hmm. So the the issues that, are, that, are, that have been brought to the table regarding the extension of the lawn seem to me more uh, in line with the house and not the dock. Is that a fair assumption? So I'm, I'm, if, 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 if people are in agreement with that or not in agreement with that, please speak up. But um, if there's no objection to that, I'm happy to entertain, um, you know, moving the certificate of completion on the, on the, on the dock forward. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm in agreement with that, Jay. Jay uh, yeah. I right. just, um, I just asked Charlotte is has the dock been completed uh, so that it's consistent with the uh, plans that were submitted and, and approved? Are there any issues with the dock in other words? Yeah, let me just pull up my old notes. I believe I went through the, the dock. Um, I don't think there were too many deviations, but let me just, sorry, let me pull up my notes real quick. <laughs> uh, Would you like me to pull the plan, Charlotte? Oh no, sorry, I was just pulling up my notes. Uh, sorry, I, I write um, like little reports up every time and it's just loading right now. Um, but uh, I don't believe there were, uh, oh, here we go. So there actually were a couple deviations uh, here. I'll share my screen so it's easy to see. Um, there were a couple, but um, I believe Caroline Reese from Cabanero had addressed them. Um, so let me just make this a little bit, oh, 
I don't know why my screen stopped sharing. Sorry. So annoying. <laughs> um, so for the doc, um, let's see. Basically, when I was looking at the doc um, plan and the as built, um, there were some structural details that were just missing that you know we kind of clarified. Um, and then these were some of the minor deviations here, the proposed ramp from the building plan. Um, and I found out from the plan that was issued with the order conditions was four by 10 and the as built showed four by 20. And then uh, Kevin Arrow had responded saying regarding the changes to the pier and the ramp, the pier length decreased by 16 feet, the ramp length increased by 10 feet. And so resulting in a combined reduction of six feet. So there were some slight changes to the pier length, the ramp length, um, and then the stone wall we figured out was existing. So that one is all set. And then there was just a slight um, uh, change in the kayak canoe rack just by you know one plus feet. Um, and we didn't find record of the changes, but the number of pilings did not change. So there was no additional disturbance to the salt marsh with that um, size change. And then again, the size of the pier was a little bit longer um, I'm sorry, it was a little bit shorter, but then the size of the ramp was a little bit longer. So these were relatively minor from my perspective. Um, and then, you know, after going through these deviations, that's when we noticed um, the lawn uh, that had been, uh, it seemed to have been extended um, from the photos and aerial imagery. So at least for the dock, most of the deviations were relatively minor in nature with no additional impact on the salt marsh. That seems pretty straightforward. I, 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 don't, yeah, agree, I don't agree with very much. the wall, but that's not part of the dock, is it? Oh, no, sorry. What, sorry, uh, what about the wall? The, or the well, stone it's pretty, board, sorry. pretty clear when you look at uh, April, the April 2017 uh, photo that that wall stops at the property line to the southeast. And there are scattered stones around there, but uh, certainly there is no line of stones that existed in 17 and then by 2018 it, it clearly had been moved all the stones had been gathered or whatever and and aligned and the line had been extended to it so um but that's that's an issue for the house mm -hmm. it, it, you know if you didn't find any impact right. of the salt marsh from the right. construction of the of the dock you know i'm okay. ready to get with that all right so, having heard that jay Pampara make a motion to issue a certificate of uh of compliance completion for the uh, dock i think it's 1407 charlotte for a 31 otis avenue do i hear a second okay. having heard a motion and a second to all those in favor please say aye will ashton will ashton aye tom bell tom bell aye trish grady trish grady aye J. Pimpari, aye. So that closes out the dock. Uh, so now, it, it's, is it our understanding, has a request been made for the certificate uh, on the house? No? No, no there was a show cause hearing. So okay. we wanted to receive your feedback before submitted the certificate of compliance request, but it is the work is done, so we could do it yeah. as soon as possible. But if you could give us some guidance as to maybe something that you would like to see, uh, you know, yeah. um, so that we can address something before we submit the certificate of compliance request. Charlotte, can you show, share your screen again? Sorry, James. Yeah, Charlotte, can you share your screen again, please? You were uh, sharing uh, with the, the, the last picture there of the existing conditions now. Uh, yes, the aerial imagery. Well, just the other pictures yeah. that, that were- For the pictures. The, the aerial, aerial imagery is pictures. definitive. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Wait, you want the near map stuff or the photos I took? <laughs> it's I like the photos that okay. you took of the existing well, conditions there. that are out there now. Yes, mm -hmm. please. Okay. So, uh, so have, we, have we addressed all of the uh, issues with the trees being, re well, I guess, you know, has the applicant made the argument that all of the trees were dead or were all the trees properly removed? Uh, I'll, I'll yeah, I also did talk about this with them as well, that, you know, in, in the future, we, we um, they weren't, it sounds like they weren't aware that they needed prior commission approval. And since these were kind of in the 50-foot buffer close to the salt marsh, you know, in the future, we just want to see 
um, you know, either an RDA or an NOI, depending on the amount of work uh, for tree removals like this in the buffer zones. And so now that, you know, the owners are now aware of that. So if there are any trees in the future, maybe on the other side of the property or anything that may or may be within our jurisdiction, um, you know, that we would just request, um, you know, simple submission to conservation for the most part. Um, and, you know, it's, um, I don't know if the commission has any additional concerns with the trees that were removed, but we did talk about this. Well, the, 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 the question I have, and I was trying to follow it there at the end uh, from comments, that the trees that were removed, the remaining trees, I see that the, uh, there were a lot of dead trees over the course of time that were removed. Were there any trees that were actually live, healthy trees that were removed from the site? that were not already previously damaged or down as a result of any storms? Were any healthy live trees taken down on the site in the past few years? Um, well, actually, Kathleen and Charlie could speak to that, but they showed me their conversations with the, the botanist. Um, so they did consult with a botanist, and the botanist was the one that determined that those trees were unhealthy and hazardous. Uh, but Charlie and Kathleen, if you would like to elaborate, Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I've lived in the town for 50 plus years. Class, it's very important to me. This town's important to me. Um, we would never, never just willy nilly cut down good, healthy trees. Um, at the time, the trees were uh, dying and we were concerned about them. So we had a local arborist look at them. Um, we did not want to cut down the trees. We like the canopies of the trees. It, it really protects the back of the house and the yard from uh, sun. And the canopies were high. They weren't affecting our view in any way, shape, or form. It was really just the trees had died and we were concerned. We were hoping that maybe there was something we could do to help the trees survive, but that was not an option. Um, we didn't cut down any healthy trees and, and we wouldn't have. Um, we had bigger concerns that they were going to damage the house or damage the dock. And the dock is not insured uh, against tree damage. And we were afraid that if they fell on the dock, that was going to cost an exorbitant amount of money to then repair the dock from, from a falling tree. Um, would you, would you be willing to uh, replant a couple trees in the front absolutely. there? Absolutely. Okay. Assuming the trees would have high canopies like the trees that were there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's nine thirty at night. We're, we're here, and uh, you know, my, my, to to move this forward and issue a certificate of uh, a COC, I'd, I'd be, I'd, I would support a uh, uh, replanting of a few trees along the way. There, typically, trees we look for are like three inch caliper trees of twelve to fifteen feet high. You know, you're not going to plant a, an eighty foot tree there and replace a tree. And sure. even a, a smaller tree of, you know, eight, 10 feet would probably grow not quite as fast, but uh, a nice tree of, uh, you know, a little, little small oak tree that 50 or 100 years from now would, would thrive and be as big as those other trees would, would be acceptable to me. We, we would be more than willing to do that and appreciate the opportunity to replace yeah. the trees that, that we didn't want to cut down. Yeah. Um, are, are the yeah. commission is okay with that? Uh, I'll just wait. So we uh, we just have to receive the written COC request first um, before yeah. you know. <laughs> right. um, and also yes, the NOI just, yes, has expired. It, so technically, you know, for work in the 50 foot buffer, we technically would need some sort of simple submission. So maybe an RDA could suffice. We we have multiple RDA examples at this point for you know planting some trees or moving trees. So that would just be something that if the owners are are willing to plant more trees, they could consider a simple. RDA submission, um, maybe either before or after the um, COC is closed out for the house. So that could be something that, you know, happy to discuss yeah. offline. <laughs> um, actually, well, I think well, you could, you could uh, probably uh, submit the RDA and the C and, and issue the approval of an RDA and issue of the COC at the same time. Okay. Okay. I'm concerned about the uh, encroachment on the marsh, actually. You want to show the aerials for 2017 and 2018? It's 
see, that's that's good right there. Mm -hmm. April 2017, and the, approximately 12 months later, you can see that uh, it's hard to tell whether there's a wall there. Can you zoom in on that, um, Charlotte? Yeah, it just looks like scattered rocks there. And in terms of a lawn, it didn't look like, so, uh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. You want to go back to where you were? Keep going. April, there you go. There's no lawn there. There's, it's, uh, if there was, it, it wasn't there after they built, you know, while they were building the house, totally gone. And uh, it's hard to say what that vegetation was there along the marsh edge, whether it's Bragmites or, or something else, but it's certainly not lawn. So uh, if you can jump without going through all those others and making us dizzy to sometime about April of 18, uh, I have to. I do have to go through each one. But... Okay, go go fast then. <laughs> right, stop at about April of eighteen then. There you go, right there. Okay, so notice the rocks are organized. Um, all of that darker vegetation, whatever it was, whether it's Phragmites is, or or is, high is, grass, is, has has been has been cut out. It's been removed. And then if you go a little bit farther into the growing season of 18, the lawn extends gradually to, go in there, yeah. That's 19. So you can see the lawn sort of grow out with time here. And it, that is in the 50 foot buffer, is it not? That's right. Sorry, I'm, pull, I'm pulling up a split screen, so it might be a little bit easier to see. So this is a, a cool feature with near map. You can look at two. Um, yeah. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very useful sometimes. <laughs> so can you, can you know, where is that? The 50, where's the Charlotte? Where's the 50 foot buffer here? Um, right if I'm not mistaken, place? it's a little bit right around here based on the site plans because there was like I believe this is a is this a deck so I think the 50 foot buffer was right in front of this deck here based on site plans so was there a variance issued to work in the 50 foot buffer there was a construction variance that was uh, issued I believe with the amended order conditions in the stormwater permit um, originally it was no in 2008 and they actually wanted as part of the 2008 uh, conditions they actually wanted a stone boundary similar to this lining the 50 foot buffer but that was taken out with the amended site plan from 2012 uh, with the stormwater permit so the 50 foot buffer is around here and we did grant a temporary construction variance i think it was five feet if you look at the minutes um that you know allowed construction vehicles to kind of move around in this area yeah okay I mean, it, it looks like there was a lot of work done without uh, the variance or permitting. I mean, I think if that came before us today, we'd want to see uh, some sort of, uh, at, at the very least, some replacement, and certainly not lawn. We would we would approve, perhaps approve native plants that were on our list, but certainly wouldn't approve a lawn. It hadn't been that long. You know, we're talking about what, three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I did, my comment about the arborist, whoever he was, I, I'm 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 surprised that a local arborist wouldn't know that he would that, that he would not advise um, the Henrys to come before us for an RDA. I mean, but you know, may may know a lot about trees, but he doesn't seem to know very much about the local bylaws. So I think that's what we were talking about earlier, as far as, you know, trying to move this along in order to come in front of the commission with some direction, which is what I understand as a result. And I didn't initiate this uh, show cause hearing, but here we are at 9.37 at night, trying to resolve or move this forward and trying to figure out what the next steps are. And that is the reasons why we have the show cause hearing. So I think earlier we had talked about a uh, 
the Henrys in, in, in common seemed amenable to submitting an RDA to address your point, Tom, and come up with some type of mitigation planting. I had just merely suggested the replanting of some trees. Typically, when we talk about trees, we talk about two to three inch caliber trees, 10 to 15 feet high. That was just a, a first step. There may be uh, other plantings that the commission would be uh, would look for. Uh, Tom, if you had any recommendations, and you know, be, this that's why we're here. Uh, some, you know, a couple of shrubs, a couple of plantings along the edge of the rock wall there. I think that any plantings or any type of mitigation for the removal of what clearly was either mulch or some form of vegetation, but not nicely manicured lawn. Uh, it's a beautiful lawn. I would like that lawn in my house if it were my house, so can't blame me for that. Uh, but just some type of mitigation to address clearly the removal of, of vegetation over time. And I think that's, I, I'm, I'm amenable to that. Well, I'd, that say, what, I'd say that whatever uh, gets planted in that uh, encroachment ought to be off of our our list. That's, that's what exactly. we would have, it, it had, had this been done um, uh, uh, by the book here, we would have been talking about uh, some sort of native plantings here. It started at about that fire pit probably and ran all the way out to the edge of the marsh. That's the 50 foot buffer that you uh, and we so um, uh, defend, not at all costs, but we rarely um, back off completely on this. I mean, so, it's a bad deal here. It, lo it looks yeah. like, you know, I mean, the lawn's, the lawn's there, unfortunately. But, yeah. but the lawn was there, though, in... When was Carmen, it? you could see the lawn was not there when it was being oh, built. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the, the lawn that's close to the dock. I'm talking about the lawn uh, on the left. That is, you know, where the fire pit oh, is. You want to go back to 2017 and show us all the, all the uh, tire tracks and... and well, it does show just... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, Cle clearly, there was there was there was. I think we're, we're all in agreement. There was vegetation that always existed. The landmark I'm using is the edge of the dock. In in yes. this picture, yeah. we just right. leave it right there, Charlotte. There, the mm -hmm. the I'll call it the nicely manicured lawn mm -hmm. goes up to the edge of the dock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right, run the clock back a little bit. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, and, hold on, and just just let just let me let me finish here for a second. What the picture that you have here in front of you is what it shows clearly is a nicely manicured lawn that goes up to the edge of the dock. About I don't know, I'm gonna say ten or fifteen feet. You can see the beginning stages of a rock wall of the the white rocks. You can clearly see that there is a a rock wall there. Between the edge of the manicured lawn and the rock wall is clearly it's vegetation. It's not asphalt. It's some form of vegetation. Call it brush, call it overgrown grass, call it whatever you want. Yeah. It's clearly vegetation. As you move forward, um, and we don't have to move forward, but in the picture that was shown before, clearly the lawn has been extended out to the rock wall, whether that's yes. 10 or 12 feet, I don't know, something there but it was always vegetation and it's still some form of vegetation. Right now it's a nicely manicured lawn. Mm -hmm. So again, I think if, to, to your point, Tom, is what we, if this project were in front of us here and we would have, we probably would not have wanted to, if we saw that there was vegetation there, similar to the project at uh, Nichols Road, if there's vegetation there now, we would like to see some form of vegetation there that exists, whatever it may be. It's clearly not manicured lawn. So we can, you, you, Charlotte, if you wanna go back a little bit and, uh, but I don't, I don't know how much more we need to prove this point. My recommendation would be to submit a, an RDA, mm -hmm. which in common, you're very familiar with this. Mm -hmm. And to the Henry's, it's a very much simplified uh, application to address work within the 100 foot buffer zone that does it, the permitting fees are minimal yeah. uh, and it, they don't need all of the other requirements that an NOI meets. 
and choose some plantings off of our approved planting list. And, and Charlotte can share that with you. There's a list of yes. all of our approved plants that are um, not invasive to the area mm -hmm. and come up with some form of mitigation to address that. I can't tell you what type of plantings and what not to put in there, but I would recommend you come up with a some form of a planting plan and present that to the commission and uh and hopefully get approval of that and close this coc out question but justin that's, that, yeah should we um so the certificate of compliance request will have an asbil plan may we show that area that was clearly disturbed from that beginning of the dog to where the rock wall is as proposed native planting area even though it's an asbil plan to close a coc yeah, sure Okay, I mean, then we'll use the same plan for the RDA because the RDA is to get permission to remove that lawn and replace it with native plantings, correct? Yeah, I think that's what we're getting at. And you know, I wouldn't say to ne you know, necessarily had to remove all of the lawn. I think you could still just in, just install, in my view, just put some plantings in there. Oh, so they may keep the lawn and then put the plantings well, five feet on center or something like that? That's that 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 that's my you know i mean it, you, you i see some people shrugging and you might want to put like, like a that. Mulch, you, pro, you probably yeah. want to put like a mulch barrier in there i don't think you'd want like you know plant you, the grass would be overgrown will you would think of like maybe a mulch barrier there i wouldn't want to see any of that that's bright green like fertilized grass or probably whatever that shouldn't be there so i would like to see no grass in that area and to actually see the plan from 20, 2008, 2011, whatever it was, how far it was supposed to go back. That, 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 that triggers something else too, Will. Uh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty emerald green lawn, has all the marks of chem lawn on it. They're adjacent to uh, uh, the uh, Bailey Creek, I believe there. And one of the complaints that we heard all summer was uh, the increased bacterial counts that's all being driven by chemlon and leaky septic tanks so i mean we never would one of the conditions jay i'm sure you'd agree was that there'd be no nitrate fertilizers put on this lawn lawns don't turn green like that without getting chemlon out there and spraying every spring or maybe twice a year and I certainly that I could be a condition agree that that's why I was mentioning uh, that a mulch barrier would probably be best from the stone wall coming back. I don't know, I'm just, you know, six, eight feet, whatever it would be, a mulch barrier with plantings to replace the um, nicely manicured lawn. Are people okay. in agreement with that? Among other things, yeah, I, I think I could, I think I could swallow that, if, but uh, I'd sure like to see that fertilizing stop. Mm -hmm. No more nitrate. Mm -hmm. Well, that that so is in our standard this is a, conditions. This is a frontline property, Jay. Literally, yeah, a frontline I agree. Property, on, and, um, yeah. and this is this is a, a serious problem in this town. Um. So, uh, sorry, Tom, can I just interrupt for one sec? I'll just say that at least with the COC, um, if it were to be closed out for the house, we can choose to issue an ongoing condition that no uh, fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides are to be used of any kind. And that's like, that's actually what I've been kind of doing for most COCs that are applicable to that. Uh, so that is something that, you know, we can ask the owners to do uh, to stop utilizing those chemicals in our buffer zones, which is actually part of our rules and regulations that, you know, everyone has to follow, but we all know that's... I think even the, order, the orders and conditions say that some of the orders survive the COC anyway. And that's Correct. Them, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and as Charlotte mentioned, all of the orders and conditions have that in them, whether or not applicants abide by that, it's a different story. But um, I agree with you 100%, Tom. You know, I think we, we have to address the issue, and it is a standard condition and would be a standard condition in any further approvals. I think for, for tonight's uh, reason why we have a show cause is we need to give direction 
to the homeowners uh, in order to receive the COC. And I think what I'm hearing is the direction is to perform, put together a uh, request for determination of applicability, an RDA that addresses the, the mitigation or uh, states out mitigation for the, uh, for the increase in long. And we've given the, the applicants some comments on how to go about doing that. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think I think it's uh, easy enough for uh, Ms. Hudson and, and Henrys to look at our our bylaws and what's what's yeah. allowed in the fifty foot buffer and what isn't to uh, condition the uh, wording and and uh, how they want to implement their RDA and right we we yep. we, 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 and we would, look at all of this again. Yeah. I, I would encourage you to work with Charlotte to get a copy of the uh, our approved planting list and, and Carmen, I know you're very familiar with that uh, and get a copy of that and, and put together a uh, what, what I call a mitigation what's well, really an RDA but it's a mitigation plan to address that and uh, come up with that and present that to, to the commission and hopefully uh, get that approved and, and get the COC in order that addresses all of our comments that were made tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much for the guidance. We really appreciate it. So we will okay. be doing that likely for the next hearing. If not, it would be for the August 11th hearing. And we would be submitting both of them at the same time. So everything can be done and approved or right. commented on and closed. Thank you. And, and, just and one we'll, get you on, uh, we'll get you on earlier in the evening. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> but I just... Um, I know Justin from the beginning of his commissioner career. I stopped going to public hearings for years and then now I'm starting again. But uh, Justin, I am so glad that I got to be present on your last hearing. Um, I only got to enjoy the beginning once again of your career, but you've always been an asset to the commission. And even though I didn't get to see you as much as everybody else, I will miss you. Best of luck. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that comment. Thank you very much. And, and likewise, haven't seen you for a little bit, but it's, it's good to see you tonight. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much to everyone for working with us yeah. and we will get this done as soon as possible. Have a great 4th okay. of July. Thank you, Thank you very much. You Have a great 4th, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. And then Carmen, I think we have. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm stuck. Yep, yep. <laughs> should I, uh, do you want me here or should I just come out? Um, that actually, um, so uh, Mr. Chair, we just have a couple um, COCs to address. And I just had yes. Carmen on just in case anybody had any yep. additional questions for my report. Do you want to just keep her here, if that's OK? Yeah, she, yeah but she's been here for this long. Yeah, so we have okay. two certificates of compliance here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Charlie, Seven Kathleen. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this is not for you guys. This is a separate one. But All right. <laughs> thank All you. these terms are different. OK, have yeah. a good night, night, guys. guys. Happy Fourth thank of you. July. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you, and yep. you as well. Okay. So Bye -bye. we have uh, two COCs, one for 74 and 86 Beach Street and one mm -hmm. for 73 Whitehead Road. So Charlotte, if you just want to take us through this. Absolutely. So I'll start with the simpler one. Um, so for 73 Whitehead, this is NOI 20-24 and stormwater permit 20-32. This was for um, a new garage, which was going to be extended uh, to the right here. Um, I believe it was like eight to 10 additional feet. Um, this uh, was, um, uh, I went actually with Carmen to these sites and did uh, the final inspections looking at the COCs and the as built, I'm sorry, the as built and the approved plan, excuse me, confusing all my words here. Um, so there were just a couple minor deviations that I noted that I'll just go through really quickly. And I did talk about these with Carmen. Um, so starting from the facing the garage, um, the this is what the garage now looks like. Um, so for the most, you know, the garage was built per plan according to the engineered site plan. I'll defer to other building requirements to another person. But the driveway was supposed to be relocated here um, on the site plan. So this was done. There was just a little bit of curbed edging to account for the um, change in the driveway. So that was good. Uh, so that's just what the driveway looks like. So one of just the minor deviations is. Um, 
the original site plan had a, like a concrete apron in front of the um, garage and that's impervious, but it was just removed and replaced with asphalt instead. And then there is a small little brick corner walkway just around the um, garage, but this area at least was still impervious. Um, and so, you know, that was just installed around the left corner of the house. Um, so no changes in impervious coverage in this area, but it was just a difference in material usage. Um, and then there were slight changes in the landscaping in the back of the garage. So I'll just go to those real quickly. These two little beds here, um, there was one originally, at least that seemed to be indicated on the site plan. So there was just a second one that was added with some additional um, shrubs. And then there were slight changes to landscaping as well in the front of the garage. Uh, sorry, I'll go back a bit. Um, oops, yeah, so this, uh, sorry, I'm like moving my screen around. So this little landscaped area was just new uh, or was slightly expanded from the original. And then um, some of the other uh, minor deviations were just the addition of some granite stepping stones that were just kind of on the left side that were already connecting the, you know, to the existing brick walkway. So this was always here. So they just added the granite stepping stones on the right side of the garage. And then one okay. thing I will note is that, you know, I talked about this with Carmen. Um, so just, uh, you know, for future reference, um, you know, there, there were already existing uh, hydrangeas and plantings here, but there were some hydrangeas that were planted right here. And this is within our buffer zones. And as you guys know, we really prefer the native plantings from our list. So I did explain that to Carmen that hydrangeas are, you know, not native um, and, you know, just for future planting suggestions, we definitely want to see those native species. So for the most part, there were just some minor deviations here and there, really no changes to the impact on the project, um, no changes in impervious. And so one condition that I would just recommend, you know, since there are landscaped areas in the buffer zones and plantings, obviously, is that we don't want the use of herbicides, pesticides, insecticides, et cetera, or fertilizers in our buffer zone. So I would just recommend that as a um, an ongoing condition. And then even though there wasn't really specific planting proposed with this plan, and Carmen, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, there is another ongoing condition that all plantings must survive three full growing seasons. So I don't know if we want to include that with any little additional shrubs that were added around the garage, but I don't think that was originally part of the proposal. Um, so those are just one or two of the ongoing conditions from the order that we could choose to issue with the order conditions. I'm sorry, with the COC, if we wanted to do that. So as you mentioned, Charlotte, those are standard conditions in our order of conditions. Correct. Um, have we been putting them as, uh, do those conditions carry forward under the certificate of under the COC? We can choose to do that, yes. So if we were to yeah. issue a COC, we can click ongoing conditions on the on the um, COC itself, and then you write the numbers that would be applicable. So um, you know what those numbers are? Forty offhand? and forty-one. <laughs> forty and forty-one. Okay. Uh, any so, comments yes. from the commission? When was no? this plan originally approved? Like this was twenty twenty. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we definitely had um, a very consistent special conditions boilerplate by 2020. It's definitely yeah. been different in the past, but I think within the last couple of years, I know within the last year we added the pool BMP maintenance, right. but for the most yeah. part, like the no herbicides, right. three full growing seasons, those are very consistent boilerplate conditions within the last couple of years. And this, I'm, uh, I'm assuming, I'm sorry, it was already disturbed area. Correct. Yeah. So okay. there was a garage that was already existing existing mm -hmm. here and it was just replaced with a new garage that was a little bit larger mm -hmm. and it has um, a live-in addition above I believe. Yeah so um, I'm sorry um, so the, this garage was already there mm -hmm. um, they just needed to put a second story because um, Roger uses the first story really not, not as like a garage but that's his gym mm -hmm. um, and it was just that extension the eight foot extension that Charlotte is talking about that was that was it but as far as the planting beds there were planting beds before uh, landscape beds uh, I have some pictures from before and I'm sorry okay. Charlotte, I emailed it to myself but no, uh, okay. regardless uh, if you can you know as you can see on the pictures Roger does an Im immaculate job with his with his landscape so I'm sure that his his landscape beds will survive the three growing seasons. So I don't think you will have any problems with an ongoing condition like that. Okay. Uh, and, and thank you, Charlotte, for the in-depth review uh, when issuing or at uh, proposing the COC. Uh, if there aren't any further comments, 
uh, JF Empire make a motion to issue a COC for the project of 73 Road with the conditions that uh, uh, orders uh, special conditions 40 and 41 that are in the original provisions carry forth. Uh, over. Do I hear a second? Second. Do I hear a second? Second, second by Mr. Bell. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Will Ashton. Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trisha Grady. Trisha Grady, aye. Jay Pimpari, aye. That uh, motion passes 4 0. Great. And then we also need a COC for the stormwater. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'll uh, issue a uh, Jay Pimpari make a motion to issue a COC for the stormwater. Uh, permit of 73 White Road. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Will Lashton. I think we talked to it. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Tom aye. Bell. Aye. Fish Grady. Jay's freezing. Fish up. Grady, aye. <laughs> hey, your internet's fine. Aye. 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 You might want to turn off your video, Jay. Yeah, it might help. Um, Maybe this so, is clearly a sign. Yeah, you you <laughs> you can't help hotel Wi-Fi. But, <laughs> I'm in a boat. Uh, Covered. Oh no, we lost Jay. Jay, did you vote, Will? Yeah, I was an I. Am I back? Kind yes, of. you're back. <laughs> you need to vote. Nope. We, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? No. You need to vote. Uh, I won't. I won't move. So I think that will pass. For, correct. Oh, Jay Pimpari, aye. That vote passes four zero. <laughs> freezing here. <laughs> freezing. Can you hear me? Hey. Yeah, yep. we got, we got that one. You know we what? Got that. Try that. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, I'll take it off video for a moment and see what happens there. Okay, uh, okay. so that passes 4 0. We do, what do we have left here, Charlotte? We have another COC? Technically two, yeah. but it's like for two projects that were submitted in tandem. I'll try to go through this really quickly. Um, so, uh, and this, this is not, there's nothing wrong with either one of these, right? Uh, wait, sorry, what was that? There's nothing what? There's nothing um, wrong with either one of these, right? Um, I had a lot of clarification questions for the revetment wall mostly, but Carmen did address a lot of those. So I don't know if you guys want me to go through those. Uh, with the dock, there were, well, there was only one deviation for the most part. Um, so I can just pull that photo up real quick. Um, but uh, for the dock, at least, that would be NOI 21-25. Um, this was 74 and 86 Beach Street. They uh, These are 2021 permits uh, they submitted a dock project um, for 74 Beach Street and then a revetment wall for 74 and 86 Beach Street. Um, so I'll go through these quickly. Um, I don't know if my computer's cutting out. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> yeah. OK, uh, my video is just really slow. So um, I'm just going to show the dock real quick. Sorry, I took a lot of photos here. Um, so this is the dock that was built per site, per site plan. The pilings were all built per plan. Everything here was built per plan. Um, there was just a clarification that Carmen and I addressed about the little platform potentially just going a little bit past the salt marsh, but we think that was the result of some outdated survey information that was used on the original plan. So that I didn't have any concerns with. So everything about the dock was built per plan except for this. So the original plan was supposed to have the dock access ramp go straight back. But as you guys can see, there are trees and I will show some ledge actually behind it. So this is where the survey marker for the ramp was supposed to go. So this to me is a very clear reasoning uh, as to why they built it from a right angle. And also I did receive a clarification. I talked to the contractor today. They hadn't finished some wooden trimmings when Carmen and I were out to the site and there's this one board here that still needed to be put back. That was done today and the contractor did send me a picture. So just want to clarify that with the commission that at least in terms of the dock, it is now done. Uh, they are going to put some wiring um, and that's that's it. 
but for the most part, this is the only deviation because we obviously didn't want to cut two trees and go into more ledge. It makes sense to me. Do we want to do this one first or do you want to do the revetment and then do both at the same time? So, is this, is, is, is this 74? This is NOI 21-25 for 74 Beach Street. Okay, Jay Pampara make a motion to issue a COC for the NOI 21-25 at 74 Beach Street. Second. Do I hear a second? Second by Will Ashton. All those in favor, please say aye, Will. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpari, aye. Okay. And so uh, we have another one for 86 Beach Street, correct? Yes. So there were, um, I did have a lot of comments for this, but luckily a lot of them were addressed by Carmen. Um, and so she was very helpful with that. Uh, so I will just go through these pictures. Sorry, these are all the ones at the dock. I'll just skip those. Um, so for the revetment wall, you can kind of look and see a clear difference in the size of the revetment wall between the approved plan and the as -built. So Carmen, feel free to jump in if I'm missing any details here. Um, but basically the reason why you see a difference in the size of the revetment wall, um, it does get larger in this area where stone steps were um, replaced, uh, I'm sorry, they were put in replacement of some existing concrete steps that were kind of narrow and dangerous. So the riprap gets a little bit thicker here and then moving from 74 Beach Street, which is on the right side to 86, which is on the left, the profile of the riprap wall is definitely a little bit wider. But this is also because um, there was definitely some older contouring and surveys that were used on the originally approved site plan. So that definitely throws off what the profile of the riprap wall was supposed to look like on the original plan. And so um, judging from the profiles here, really using the existing slopes. And that's why this area is a little bit larger here to stabilize this area and meet the existing slope conditions. Also, some of the rocks here were put around some of the trees that were supposed to remain. And I'll get to those conditions in a bit. But that was the main difference that I did notice. And Carmen, feel free to jump in if you want to like, offer any additional information. But this was supposed to be built, um, you know, the way this should look. It's just, unfortunately, it wasn't really clear on the original plan, how it was supposed to look due to the outdated, um, you know, contouring and serving that was done. So just, uh, just to clarify a little bit, um, what we were proposing on the plan was based on survey that wasn't updated. We, we had done uh, some survey years ago, and then we went back and got more detailed information in order to put this together. But that in, that survey information wasn't translated to the existing conditions plan. So what we thought we had was a higher slope. So we had a one-to-one -one slope for the riprap and we were proposing some fill in the back where you can see the mulch there because we thought that we were, the differential between the bottom of the, of the revetment on the top was greater than what it really was. So what Tony, uh, Tony Ayoria did this. So what Tony did is there was no reason to bring any fill. So he just used the existing contouring to put the, the rock there. And whenever he found any uh, pieces of ledge outcropping, he used those as uh, like a key, like an anchor to hold on to, to, to use for the big stone. So what he did for the revetment was he put filter fabric, then he put small stone, and then he put the big stone on top. So that's that's the reason why instead of having a one-to-one -one slope that is you know this big, you have a much shallower slope that just follows the contours. Mm -hmm. And then Carmen, also following up on that, um, on the as-built versus the site plan, mm -hmm. it does appear that the stone riprap wall surpassed the edge of the coastal beach in crossing into the salt marsh. But would you say that is also from the yes. outdated survey? That yes, exactly. Because they he had to maintain the slope, so he just came to wherever the bottom of the slope would be. As you can see, he didn't change from. First of all, he didn't go at a one-to-one, -one, which would have been, you know, a 45 degree angle. Um, and he just followed the slope. So what you're looking at is some rocks over maybe the edge of that 
rocky beach. The salt marsh is way over to the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then, and uh, way, Tony, yeah, Tony is okay with his uh, hip surgery today. So. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. I, I, I feel bad whenever someone's like, I'm in surgery, and then they still answer my emails. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, I hope you're doing well. Um, and then one thing I'll just also note that was also clarified is that as you can see from this photo from 74 to 86 Beach Street, and this is 86 right behind here, there were wood chips that were added on top of the uh, area with the revetment wall. Um, so these, to clarify, were not from the trees that were cut down as part of the site plan. Um, the wood chips were brought in because there was basically mostly dirt and minimal grassy areas up here. And in order to stabilize this top area above the revetment wall, the wood chips were added as a biodegradable stabilization and then to encourage, you know, revegetation of this area. Um, on the site plan, it did show that the area above the revetment wall was to be revegetated in kind, but there really wasn't much to revegetate that wasn't there originally. So it's not like this area was disturbed and cleared and things like that other than the trees. So just the wood chips were brought in as a, a stabilization for the top of the bank that had a lot of dirt. Um, and I did look at my previous site photos and I could confirm that from other photos. So that's just a minor clarification there. Um, does the commission have any questions about um, about that stuff? I can get into the special conditions, but I just want to make sure that nobody has any further questions with any of these deviations or no. clarifications. Sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so no. I'll just go. I'll go through these quickly. But this this order conditions did have special conditions, so I'll just run through them quickly. It was fifty five through fifty seven, so three in total. Um, we wanted seven day notice to conservation agent before the work was conducted. That was done. I was notified during the pre-construction visit and then afterwards that the work would occur roughly two weeks after the tree removal, which actually happened right after Thanksgiving on November 29th. And the revetment wall started about a week and a half to two weeks later. Um, and it was done by early to mid January. I had a pre-construction visit for the dock in late January when the revetment wall was pretty much done and the wood chips were added at the top. Uh, and so the second condition was that the town of Cohasset will retain the arborist at, an, at the applicant's expense to evaluate and confirm the dead dying trees in the project area that were subject to be removed and provide rationale to the agent. Living trees will not be removed without re review and approval from the commission slash agent. So um, we set up um, the applicant hired Maltby tree. And so we had their arborist come out. We had a meeting with John Cabanero. Um, Tony Ayara, who is the contractor for the revetment wall, both owners from 74 and 86 Beach Street, um, and the arborist from Maltby to go over. We walked this entire site and we looked at the trees that were directly, obviously, in the line of work that needed to come out, as well as the ones that were very close to the line of work. And so the arborist went through each tree. Most of them were actually dead or dying significantly from exposed root damage. So, in my previous photos, we documented all of that, and John Cavanero put those on the site plan saying like dead, dying tree to be removed with exposed roots. There were only a couple trees that were alive to be removed that the arborist said um, they will not survive within like the, the next couple years. And so he recommended just taking them out because it would allow the trees that are already existing here to get more canopy space. And so they were already in poor health. And so all of that was clarified with myself and uh, John and the team. And then John Cavanero updated the site plan with red X's uh, to show that there were 16 trees that were being removed and then one tree at the end that was going to be pruned. So all that was clearly documented on the uh, site plan. And then um, I was given notice when the trees were coming out. I went and looked at them, checked to make sure. We actually marked each tree with a, a pink flag that was very, very obvious of which trees were supposed to come out. So we made sure that that was clear to the Maltby tree crew who did the work. And uh, I was over there when they were mostly done and everything was good. They finished by the end of the day that day. And then I got a picture from the owners that all the trees were removed. And um, so that was in compliance with that condition. And then of course, prior to removal of any dead dying trees, approval from the agent and arborist assessment must be attained. That is the last special condition kind of tying into this uh, second one. The applicant may reserve the removal of dead trees and dying. So they were present during the a visit to inspect all of the trees. And we did appreciate Malpi giving us the, those explanations for each of those trees that had to be removed. Um, so those are all the special conditions. Um, anyone have any questions? 
Sorry, Jay, you're cutting out. Did we lose him? <laughs> Did anyone hear Jay? <laughs> none of them. This ping. No, none of them need to carry forward. Yeah, that was going to be my question to you guys. Since Do there any were no of them? So it doesn't sound like any of them need to carry forward. Yeah, there were no plantings. Can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me yeah, now no. at all? Sorry. Yes. Yes, I'm we can hear you. I'm going to try and call in. Sorry, yeah, we can hear you. But yeah, to, to confirm, can there you hear were me no. Now? Yes. <laughs> yes, Jay, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, I make a motion to issue a COC for the project at uh, 20, uh, excuse me, NOI 21 1486 Beach Street. Second. We're here a second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Will Ashton. Will Ashton, aye. Tom Bell. Tom Bell, aye. Trish Grady. Trish Grady, aye. Jay Pimpari, aye. That passes uh, 4 0. Oh, Great. Question, Charlotte. Um, this didn't have a stormwater permit, correct? It was just a notice of intent? Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Can I come and thank you? Have a good fourth. Thank you so much. We'll Happy miss fourth. you, Justin. Take care. <laughs> well, good night, guys. Good night. We'll, we'll see you around in other areas. Good night. All right. The uh, winding down here. Shall I know you have. Uh, from the comment, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Is there anything that's uh, urgent that we need to aware of? Am I freezing again? I'm going to call in. No, I can send these over email um, or I can say them at the next meeting. Um, but I think we should definitely, you know, um, say thank you to Trish and Jay. You guys have been wonderful commissioners we really appreciate all of your time and we know that you guys obviously have full-time jobs families other things to do so you know i think i'm speaking for everyone saying that we really appreciate it and it's been a pleasure working with all of you guys and um you know stay in touch and if you are ever interested in the future you're always welcome to come back <laughs> to my knowledge i don't know if that's allowed i'll figure it out but yeah again until then you know thank you guys and um, we just uh, want to thank you for all your hard work on this commission for the past several years. We're going to miss yeah, you. Thank you guys. We're going to miss you guys. I know. We're going to miss you guys. <laughs> Not going to be the same. <laughs> can Can you hear me now? Yes, Jay. Yeah. I can hear you. So did you hear? Did you hear that? I hope that got through. <laughs> I did. I I actually um, um, I called in. So hopefully you can hear me. But I called in as well. Perfect. Yeah, we can hear you better. But, uh, you know, again, just thank you guys for all of your time, commitment, your hard work and sitting through these late evenings. And you guys have been doing this obviously longer than I have. So um, well, we appreciate I, it. I, I have a lot to say, but not a lot to say here. Uh, thanks for everything. It's been a, a crazy eight years. I can I tell you that, you know, Charlotte, it's, it's great to have you on, on board. It's, Okay. Carmen uh, attested to earlier on, you know, as she was one of the, we used to see Carmen every week in front of the commission with, with Kevin Auer consulting and uh, there, were, there were crazy day years ago that this commission is, is, is not, where, you know, most of the projects were approved within five or 10 minutes, the discussion, there was no deliberation, it was, uh, if you knew somebody on the commission, the project was approved. And I hate to say that, but you know, I, every year it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, so thank you for all hanging in there. And I, I will miss you all, but eight years is is a long time to be on the commission. And I, I think it's it's good that other people are, are stepping up. And I know you'll all be a little bit more vocal and. Will and Tom, you're going to be a great chair, co-chair one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, 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 thing, one thing about this commission is we all get along. 
we really do. Yeah. And and that you can't say that for all the boards and commissions in town. We, yeah. we we've got a really good team, and and both of you have been um, at least a good example for me, at the very least. And and I've learned a lot in the, in yeah. the two years now, and I feel a lot more confident in uh, yeah. what I'm doing, and and and. And largely just learned by following you guys, you know? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I've said it before, and I don't want to keep you here all night, but, you know, you can never treat two projects the same. You know, we, we try and be right. fair and consistent across the board with everybody, but no two projects are, are the same. I, and I, I say this even in the public forum, and this is a public forum because it's being recorded. 80% of the projects that come in front of the commission, I think it personally, it's terrible projects. I really do. The question <laughs> you have to ask yourself is whether or not it meets the 10th of block. And that's really it. You know, and some of the projects tonight weren't great projects, but if it meets the intent of the bylaw, then you have no uh, choice but to, but, uh, to approve the projects. And if you're not approving the project, or you're denying the project because you don't think it's a good project, you're being biased and you're going to get yourself in big trouble with that. And, you know, you don't want to be in front of the legal court system or, or, or any legal system whatsoever being biased or being prejudiced. So every project, you know, you, you see them tonight and you'll see them in the future that, you know, kind of shake your head and you go, what am I looking at here? But you kind of, you don't want to set precedence, but, you have to look at it at each project. And what, what kills me is some engineers or some attorneys will present something one week and then six months later be on the complete opposite side of the argument yeah. in, in, in presenting a completely different case. And that's like, okay, it's, it, it's just nature of the business. But, you know, to Tom's point, everybody gets along. Uh, we don't always agree. I think if we always agreed on every project, then the, the would, I would be concerned about that. I think you have seven different people of differing opinions and uh you know chris has been a great chair and allowing you know people to voice their opinion and everybody speak for themselves and hey all you need is four votes if you have seven people you just need a majority and there's probably always going to be one in a different direction but that's that's just it it's it's okay but well, we, it's we been usually, fun guys we usually get to anonymous decisions <laughs> yeah. I wish they were. <laughs> There's actually only been like one or two, and one of them yeah. is recently for an RDA on tree removal. And other than that, we after you know several hearings, sometimes we come to a conclusion that that works for for us. And so I do second Tom's thoughts. I love how our board works together because yeah. from what I've heard from other boards, that's not always the case. So it is nice to be a part of this commission, all working towards the same goal. And even though we have different perspectives, we still come to a conclusion with certain conditions that, you know, satisfy us and, you know, help everyone, so. Well, and yeah. for the most part, our, our engineers do finally, um, I can see them change. I can see them um, respond to us. You know, they'll learn, they'll, they'll learn, they'll, they'll learn what, what they can do and what they can't do by experience. And yeah. uh, some of them, some of them clearly have changed their behavior in the two years I've, I've been here. Um, and I think a result of that is the reviews that the in-depth reviews that Charlotte's doing now. You know, we just yes. unfortunately didn't have that with our previous agent before that. For that, <laughs> it's true. There's it's always true. something yeah. I miss, but I try. I definitely no, look through uh, it. it. <laughs> it's, you, you're you're Thanks light you. years ahead of our, our previous agent with the reviews and the in-depth back and forth and the. Uh, just the COCs. I mean, you know, back in the day, it would be when we were live, and I don't know whether you're going to go live in person. It would be at the end of the night. Here's a COC. You know, pass it down. Everybody sign, pass it down, pass it down. It was like, all right, we're out of here. So, uh, it, and, and you know, it, you're, it, it's good for the community. It's good for the environment. It's good for everybody to have a conservation agent that's actually watching out there. We have boots on the ground, and you know, if you if you do the wrong thing, then you'll be, you'll be in front of the commission. And I think everyone's been treated fairly with this even the situation tonight. You know, everyone's everyone's treated fairly. We, we it's a small town. We have to live in the town, um, so you know we don't want to cause we don't want to create enemies. But you know, you're a regulatory agent agency, 
And, and that's the one thing that people don't understand. The Conservation Commission is a regulatory agency and has the authority to issue. Fees. We haven't done that, um, but you could always issue fines if you see an act. One of these days, we'll put this. Right. We'll put this stick about. <laughs> it's going to happen eventually. I think so far, most people have been compliant. Obviously, by attending show cause hearings, willing to submit RDAs yeah. and mitigation plans. But obviously, if we were to be met with the opposite result, then of course we tighten up the screws and we say, "All right, well, enforcement order. Here we go." So, um, you know, yeah. it, it, at least from what we've seen so far, people have mostly been compliant. But you know, like you said, we're a regulatory agency and we are fully prepared to yeah. to do right. more right. if they're not going to meet us somewhere. So, yeah. Uh, is there any other forty-eight-hour issues that anybody wants to bring up? No. I can, Great. but not super dire. Sure. Or great. <laughs> take a look at the sil take a look at the siltation um, barriers at on Howe Road. It's all ugly again. Okay, I'll check them again. Yeah. <laughs> I think you could just spend your uh, rest of your career until the project's done up on Howe Road. Uh, but again, the commission will look a little different. I assume Chris McIntyre is going to be appointed full time member. And I think you still might be short staffed a member, but um, you know, all the best and hopefully get some new recruits in here. I have Absolutely. a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Do I have a second motion to adjourn? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Everybody have Thanks, a great um, night. Miss seeing you all. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, care. guys. Bye, Trish. Bye, Jay. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Good Thanks. night. Bye.